everyone, and welcome to the Transatlantic Call-In Show, the show where you can call in and you can talk to trans people and you can tell us why we don't exist, why we shouldn't have human rights, why we should be banned from Irish dancing and all kinds of other things. Yes, that is a real thing that came up today. Why don't you call in Amazing. and explain how sex is actually an immutable binary? And you could just prove me wrong live on air. You could prove Arden wrong live on air and it would be so humiliating. You'd have the ultimate dunk clip. Oh. So, <laughs> I mean, no one's ever managed to do it before, but I'm sure you will be the first. Please call in for free. You can either call the number below, plus one, 720, 619, 2288, or you can click on the link in the description on the YouTube video. We will prioritize gender critical and anti-trans and defending whatever women callers. <laughs> you will be at the top of the list. So please do call in. Um, this week you can talk to, I've already kind of said, given it away. This week you could talk to me, Katie Montgomery, or... Me, Arden Hart. Hello, everybody. How you doing? Um, I can hear myself echoing back, I've just realized. Man, really? Okay. <laughs> we were just talking about yeah, we this. It's because just... I... we... before the show I was talking my normal volume, and now I'm talking my streamer volume, so... <laughs> yeah, and I, I was mentioning it's because I have this cute little thing where I have a hearing disability, and so everything is really loud. <laughs> Uh, I was but, like, Arden, okay. I can always hear your headphones. And she was like, yeah, that's, that's because I was like, oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> it's all right. It happens. That's why I like to make humor out of it. But yeah. So hi, everyone. Uh, I'm excited for uh, to get some calls in today. Hopefully we get some. Uh, all the calls have been kind of softballs lately. So if you've been battling people today, it sounds like maybe we've got a, a chance at getting a, a decent caller. I've got my. I'm paying my dues to Forrest for the mug competition. My never had a bad day shirt. So this is, it's on the record, Forrest. I submit <laughs> to your victory over the, the holiday mug brawl. You did, in fact, sell the most mugs. And now we are marked as losers <laughs> for all of time. If you, if you don't know who or what a Forrest is or why Arden managed to lose to them, you should subscribe to this channel because... We have loads of shows on this channel, and this isn't the only one. This is the best one, but Forrest shows, you know, a close, fairly close, second, maybe third, I don't, I don't know, but it's, right. if you it's decent. Eyes. <laughs> but yeah, I'd like to get to callers. However, I have a whole host of rants to get off first, which maybe will bait some people and some topics. But Arden, first, I would like to hear about your every single second you've been alive since we last talked. Well, uh, the most important thing <laughs> is what I put on the zero. screen before the show. I was able to uh, get my favorite lizard species this week. They are called emerald tree skinks, and they are the cutest thing alive. I'll put a little thing up. They are cute. They yeah. are this arboreal skink species that are also one of the only, like, well, very few social reptile species. So they like to live in big colonies together. They're so adorable, and they got that torpedo shaped body they're the cutest little thing and they're sitting in that little tank up there uh so yeah i'm really excited for them to they're just little babies but i'm excited for them to get all comfy and be able to start like pulling them out and socializing with them and all that stuff but Aww. that's the most interesting thing that's happened to me what, what about you katie i know you've got some some tea to spill some, some <laughs> politics and news things you wanted to talk about get into it yeah well i hadn't really been focusing on the trans wars as much like recently. I don't know if people noticed. I, I've still been posting a bit on Twitter, but not as much as I was back when Twitter was merely terrible rather than absolutely horrific like it is now. Mm. Um, and that's mainly because I was like focusing on, I had this big event coming up. It was like the UK Pokemon card championships. And I was kind of nervous about it and I did terribly. Um, but <laughs> I, I kind of have been thinking a bit more about what's going on and stuff. And also it's coming up to an election in the UK. There's always nonsense going on in the US. Today, in particular, but this week seems to have been full of all kinds of nonsense. And I know we're going to cover some of it in the polls section of this. Mm -hmm. um, I thought I'd just mention that we had like a short list of things to put as poll questions. And there was a lot, so we didn't get it all in. Uh, we're covering the USA one, right, Arden? Is that right? Yes, that's the poll. Yeah, okay. Say, yeah. So for anyone who doesn't know, um, in the UK, there has been a major trans news event. Uh, I guess this is, I'll just give a warning, it's going to be pretty bleak and I'm going to be quite blunt about it. Um, so if you're not up for hearing about murder and stuff, just phase out for two minutes and come back and, and we'll 
we'll be on to something else. But if anyone doesn't know, in the UK we had um, a murder of a young trans girl uh, last year. I think it was last year. And um, who's called Brianna J. And it's quite a big deal. We don't. We have quite a low murder rate in the UK. And she was a, you know, it became in, like national news. And uh, there was a long trial um, with loads of details. And it turns out these killers are, the killers, I mean, extra grim were also kids. They were in her sort of school or school age. Mm -hmm. And it was a boy and a girl. And there was a transphobic motivation. There was apparently multiple motivations. Um, but the judge has decided that there was a transphobic motivation. However, obviously, the anti-trans movement has decided there wasn't a transphobic motivation because, you know, they can't admit that transphobia exists. Otherwise, everything they do is horrific, which it is. So there's been a lot of kind of um, people saying the horrible transphobic environment that the media and the government has created has led to this happening. And then the transphobes saying, it's nothing to do with her being trans. So obviously then misgendering her and calling her horrible names and saying disgusting things about how she looks and all that. Just, you know, doing normal gender critical stuff. Uh, but then it got all the way to the Prime Minister who in Parliament made some, oh, well, the opposition doesn't even know what a woman is comment whilst Rihanna Jay's mum was in Parliament there to, I don't know, talk with Parliament. Uh, so, like, Christ. you know, a grieving, grieving mother who the result of the trial has only just finished, like, super recently. <clears throat> and, and the ruling for the sentencing and stuff has only just happened. And he just made this comment. Like, it, they've been making that, you don't even know, or a comment for ages. And, you know, these jabs at trans people. And obviously the current government, um, led by this prime minister, has been signalling that it wants to attack trans people's rights for ages. And... You know all the all the normal stuff from right wing governments, um, but it was it was kind of grim. And to be honest, when I saw it, I was just like, "Oh yeah, this is another one of those things where it's actually horrific." But I've seen so many of these. This is just like another one. It's yet another gender critical man sp like spitting on some grieving mother whose child was murdered because he doesn't really think trans people are humans. But for some reason, it's really kicked off in the press. Uh, and even the leader of the opposition, who's probably going to be our next prime minister, said something about it and took a photo with the mother and, you know, all that all that normal politics bullshit. Um, but yeah, it's, re it's really kind of kicked off. And I guess the question that I was originally going to ask for the poll, though we do have a, a better one, um, just because this one's just kind of confrontational and grim. Uh, it's just like, what, like, do you think this is acceptable to make jabs at, the mothers of dead trans kids like it's just fucking disgusting and yeah. and i guess why i want to communicate is like honestly the idea of a man with a load of power laugh like basically laughing in the face of a grieving mother of a murdered trans child i don't even think as far as gender criticals go like i've, I've seen them do way worse than that like they, they do way worse than that every single day. I've seen them doing way worse than that about Brianna J and about, you know, other trans people who have been murdered and, and all kinds of horrible mm. things. Um, yeah, I mean, this honestly, this feels like a one out of 10 on how bad they get. But I guess because it was the timing and the prime minister and all this kind of stuff. Anyway, it's pretty bleak. So if you're the kind of uh, dickhead who feels that's justified, why don't we call in? Because... There's been a lot of hand wringing on the on the like conservative side, saying like, "Oh, the real villain here is the opposition leader who's trying to make this a political event." If that's your opinion, call in, call in and justify it. I I would love to talk to you. Um, but then you know, there's been a few other things. Like I, I mentioned in the start, trans women have been accused of having an unfair advantage at Irish dancing, um, which is Phenomenal. pretty hilarious. <laughs> Outstanding. <laughs> We've been accused of being a threat to democracy, you know, all this normal stuff. But in a, in a, um, I was just kind of perusing Twitter and seeing what was going on. I saw this thing from a couple of days ago where a bunch of gender critical people, mainly men, were commenting on some tweet I made. And I, I just wanted to run this past you, Arden, uh, first oh before I say what they said. 
Okay. And um, also maybe the trans people in the audience and also the cis people in the audience to see if this makes sense to you. I said, every time I've been in a dangerous situation with an abusive man, I've prayed that he doesn't clock that I'm trans. No cis woman ever once hoped to be read as a trans woman in that same situation. Like mm. when you're in a position where you feel like, okay, this could go really badly when, you know, some really dodgy men get on the bus and you're the only person there or like you're walking down an alley or someone comes over and starts talking to you and they give you really uh, vibes or someone follows you to a party, uh, like 20 minute walk, which are all of those things I've had. Um, every time my main thought is please don't clock I'm trans, please don't clock I'm trans because I, yeah. I could still be in a danger. And this isn't just me. I'm just saying trans people could still be in a dangerous situation then anyway. Anyone could be. A cis woman would also be in danger in that situation. And I'm not trying to minimize that. What I'm saying is, I think, at least for me, and I think it should be common, I don't know what you think, Arden, it would be quite common for trans women in particular to think, please don't clock me in that situation. Oh, yeah. 100%. I mean, the I, number one thought, I think. Definitely. I, I Somebody who's deranged enough to violate your boundaries and like follow you home certainly isn't going to have a problem antagonizing you specifically over you being trans uh and uh, yeah and if they're following you it could well be some kind of i mean it could be anything it could be some creepy loser all the way up to some kind of sex attack angle or worse and that's the kind of thing is not going to get better if they suddenly find out you're trans like right uh, it's not going to be like, oh, yeah. I'm sorry, fellow sir. I, I didn't realize you yeah. were a man. I will let you be on your way, good fellow. No, absolutely not. It definitely never plays out that way. So um, I had a bunch of gender criticals commenting on this. Uh, we had one saying, uh, man, tell me you know nothing about domestic violence in a single tweet. Someone else saying, wondering how many times a six foot tall, built like a brick shit house, Monty has genuinely been at risk. Well, I mean, you could ask me, but you couldn't because you blocked me because you're pathetic. <sighs> One absolute asshole. She can't use this women's reality and fears as a mean to prop up her fantasy. You know, all this kind of bullshit. And just mm -hmm. another one uh, who said, um, this bloke has no idea what women go through or what male violence against women and girls looks uh, feels like. I'm not going to go into details, but I've had several things. You know, I have I have been in uh, abusive domestic situations and I have been sexually assaulted and I have been followed home and I have been in fucking horrific situations where I feared for my life. Uh, all those things I just read out to you are from JK Rowling's likes tab. Uh, Ooh. Yeah. So like several in a row about oh me God. in particular, like back to back likes from her about me talking about this. I, I just, I hate this. And even in the replies, to, I was like, oh, wow, I missed this because this happened like a few days ago or something. Someone was commenting on it a few days ago. And I was like, wow, these people are fucking vile. Referring to all the people who said that and also her. And still there are people who have been like, well, surely if JK Rowling is a decent person, she will say, you know, uh, she'll condemn these words. Like, what are you talking about? She is obviously just as bad as all these people. Why do people still treat her as if she's some kind of like uh confused or like a decent person at heart but just is slightly misguided like she's just as much of a wacko extremist as the rest of these people uh yeah for sure i mean especially like uh, reacting to specific responses to like you an individual activist it's one thing to be reacting to general claims of trans activism but to be targeting specific trans activists which obviously this is not the first time she's done this i mean Jesse Gender, who's been on the show, has been targeted directly by J.K. Rowling, and you're going through this. She it's, went for me before, actually. Right? Uh, yeah, it's not surprising that she's gone for you before. But yeah, it's definitely there's a huge difference between you know your misguided old aunt who's stuck in her ways and just kind of attacks general bad ideas that she has, rather than a person with a lot of wealth and power targeting specific individual activists. That's a very very different domain of a problem and it's kind of surreal that both now ricky gervais and jk rowling <laughs> at least for a time knew who i was uh <laughs> it's just so pathetic like i'm a no absolute nobody and they're sitting there liking all these tweets just insulting me personally and like 
denying the fact that I've ever been sexually assaulted and like I, I don't even feel like I can safely describe what that makes these people without her threatening to sue me so mm. like it's just it's just so pathetic it's just so so many layers of pathetic I, it hasn't affected me at all like I've seen like I was saying significantly worse than this uh, I just kind of I wish people would drop this kind of like she's gonna change how much she'll regret she'll wish she no she won't she's mm. she's gonna believe this for the rest of her life she's absolutely no different to any of the rest of them anyway i've done a huge load of ranting at the start of the show should we slam through the polls yeah and then let's, let's touch on these polls it's all important stuff though and maybe the limitation of having polls the way we do is that sometimes there are multiple topics to talk about um but yes let's touch on these polls so Last week, in the wordiest poll I've ever written on the fly, is, in your opinion, are there actually a meaningful amount of circumstances in which a gender sex marker on a driver's license aids the relevant authorities in accurately identifying the ID holder? 64% said no, and 36% said yes. Most of the arguments that said yes to, I was scrolling through the comments, were saying things along the lines of like, you know, more information is better. And while maybe we make assumptions, it can sometimes help law enforcement. And and I, I generally understand that. But I think those people obviously didn't watch last week's episode where we talked about the poll because I think there's a specific response to that, which is there are photos on your ID. There's a description of you on your ID you know, your height, your hair color, your eye color, your weight, all of these things where you don't need to make assumptions based on, oh, they're probably under 5'6 because it has an F on it. No, you don't need that. It literally tells you what their height is. Um, it's mad that yours has all that detail because ours has our name, address, like what we're legally allowed to drive, maybe yeah. our age. and Yeah, no, definitely our age and then our, our sex and that's it. No yeah. eye color, no height. Yeah, ours definitely come with a lot of detail, and um, this is, if you don't know... Does yours even have weight? I, I, might, I might be making that up. It shoe not size, have number <laughs> no, of fingers. Not, not shoe size. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it has height, but it might not have weight. But this is all coming from last week, the uh, deputy executive something, the top guy of the Florida Highway Safety and Motor Vehicles, uh, it, basically the Florida DMV, the Florida... The person who oh, yeah, oversees the entire, uh, that group of the law in Florida issued a directive saying that they would no longer accept requests for gender marker changes and that they would, uh, 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 uh what was it? They were going to invalidate, uh, going to arrest license. you for driving basically. Yeah. Right, right. Anyway, the point is they're trying to make it so trans people can't get the gender marker changed on their license plate, on their license ID. And I was trying to argue that maybe having a gender marker on your ID is actually kind of a waste of time. Because how yeah. many situations where you're handing someone your ID, do they actually need that bit of information? If you're going to the doctor, they don't need that. They can get that in other ways. And that can be on your chart where they'll have all that information forever. If you're going to the police, they can ask you those questions and you, they can get all that information if you are like at a bar where they're carding you to make sure you're of age to have a drink, they don't need to know what the fuck is in your pants. There's basically no situation that I can really think of where what, it is actually meaningful to have a gender marker on an ID. What the claim is, the, the claim we need this because it's an important piece of information is also the claim that there has been a situation or there could be a situation where someone is like, ah, oh, yes, this picture matches. And yes, you seem about that age and you are that height. And you do have those eye that eye color or whatever. And yes, you do live at this address. But hang on a minute. You don't have these chromosomes. Right, <laughs> like, right. What are you talking about? If someone's using a fake ID, then either all the details are going to be wrong and it's obviously just like stolen or isn't going to look like them or it's going to be fake and they can fake what it says for MRF anyway. Right. So it, Yeah. And that, that's just... the big claim is that, you know, they're preventing fraud. But also something we pointed out last week is that it's not uh, there's going to be a paper trail. In first of all, we live in 2024 where your data of like where you like to shop and how regularly you leave your house is accessible to law enforcement. So um, I'm not really concerned about them not knowing who you are, no matter what your ID says. And secondly, you have to go through so many bureaucratic hoops uh, to get your license changed where it's not like it's, 
oh gosh, we can't compare this person because there's a different letter on their license plate. No, they can literally go look and find the paper trail. Oh, this person submitted a affidavit for a gender marker change on their on their uh, birth certificate and license. Also, has there ever been, even once, in the state of Florida, in the country of the USA, on earth, a single example of someone committing fraud by having the wrong letter on their sex marker on their driving license? No. I'm not aware of any such thing. I'm gonna bet. Call no. in. Give me a piece of evidence. Yeah. Bring bring the bring the article. Bring the the police report. A, even one person on Earth. You've got how many hundreds of years since cars have existed to to bring that piece of evidence? Because they always say this. They say, "Oh, we're preventing fraud," but like, no. What you're doing is pretend pre preventing the alleged concept of a theoretical fraud that you actually can't really explain how that works. What fraud can right. you commit? It's so like, well, I haven't changed my name, and I haven't changed my eye color and my height, and I haven't changed my address, but I've changed the sex marker, and now I'm going to steal a billion dollars from the bank. Like, what the fuck yeah. are you talking about? Absolute joke claim. Like, trivially false. Zero evidence provided. Can dismiss instantly. Yep. So, so I'm in a was... proper rant mode today. No, that's great. <laughs> the calls are going to love it. The audience loves it. I love it. This is last week's poll, so if you missed out on that, that's okay, because we have a new poll this week that you can get involved in. This poll reads, Do you care that anti-trans laws have already caused at least 5% of U.S. trans people to flee their state? So, if you don't know, Josie, a friend and regular guest on the show, um, was a big part of the 2022 U.S. trans survey which was an updated of the 2015 one, uh, one of the largest surveys. They had 36,000 respondents in the first one, some amazing data in there. There was 92,000 respondents for this one, which means that the data is even stronger and more representative of the broader populations, despite, you know, there, there's definitely some objections that can be made to the sampling method, but I think when you have a sample size this big, it negates a lot of the problems with that. Um, one of the findings they found was that... Uh, uh, I don't have all the other numbers, but uh, they, they contrasted like 30 some odd percent said they felt the need to leave the state and 5% of, oh, you're muted, Katie, by the way. Sorry, I, I have the numbers. 47% said they were considering. Right. So 47% were considering. That's almost half. And 5% of people actually did flee their home state due to... In 2022. Right. And that that's the big thing to mention too, that this happened in 2022 where the total anti-trans laws were like 140 something. Whereas in 2023, the next year, last year, it was almost 497 anti-LGBTQ laws, most of which were targeting trans people specifically. So uh, it's probably safe to assume that this number has even gone up. And then you start getting into interesting questions where like, you know, if the state is directly responsible for people upending their life, like, what responsibility does the government have to like compensate people for how that's affected them or to like provide, you know, maybe mental health care or services or something to those people who are clearly going to be experiencing distress upending their entire life. I think it's a, uh, it, it's a definitely a really interesting finding. And uh, I know that uh, there's people in chat who have been talking about the feeling like they need to get out of their state, like for a long time, many members of chat mentioning like, ah, yeah, my state's terrible. I've been thinking about moving and things like that. So it is a sentiment that I think is common to a lot of us. And uh, I'm definitely very curious uh, of what, what other data we're going to find when the full report comes out. So this, this was a, a big poll as well. It was 90,000 people, I think. Yeah, 92,000 um, respondents. Yeah, so 5% is one in 20, which is 4,500 people or more. Crazy numbers, like absolutely yeah. horrific. Um, also some other, like other numbers from the same study. I, I, know, I think this is just the like, um, I don't know how to describe it, quick look, like the initial obvious fight. I think there's loads more data to come out from this study. Right. Um, but two of the other numbers that really stood out to me, can, bearing in mind, okay, so nearly half, 47% of US trans people have considered moving state. 5%, one in 20 already have. On top of that, 30% have faced real life harassment in the last year. So just under a third for being trans in one year. And yet, 
despite those numbers, like the level of like abuse and, and state oppression that's causing people to flee their homes, one in 20 people to flee their homes, uh, 94% in the same study still said that coming out had made their lives better. Like, that, that's a, that says so much for the weight of gender dysphoria and the weight lifted from transition that people, like, I, you really need to just step back from all the rhetor rhetoric and bullshit for a second. Just look. I mean, obviously, there are a lot of people trying to wipe trans people out and, you know, oh, they don't want to put us in concentrate, whatever. They want to create a world without trans people. And they think maybe, maybe if they make it so you can't get a job, maybe if they make it so you're not allowed to drive, You'll give up and detransition and just fit into cishet normative society. Mm -hmm. Even when they're still doing that, the vast majority, 94%, so again, that's 19 out of 20, said that their lives were better, despite all that bullshit. Even though out from that 19, like, the numbers don't quite work like this, though, but if you have, like, 20 trans people, half of them are considering fleeing for their safety. And... 19 out of 20 of them are saying that transition was still good for them. Like, and, you know, that that remaining 1 out of 20, we don't know what the reasons are. It could be from abuse, it could be from not being able to get a job, it could be from, you know, not being able to flee their state or really feeling like they need to, it could be from being attacked, whole range of things. Maybe it could also be transition regret. But um, just the, the numbers here are just so crazy. Like, I, I was comparing it to... Like, you know, we often compare surgery regret rates. Whenever we talk about regret, we always have to fall back to these, like, um, objective, measurable medical things. Like, oh, GRS's re regret rate is less than 1%. Knee surgery's regret rate, in some cases, is up to 30%, which is just crazy. Like, nearly a third. But, like, just to, how, how high would the regret rate on knee surgery be if, as well as that, already it's got nearly a third regret rate... But if the people getting knee surgery had to flee their state and who were attacked on the street, a third of them faced harassment on the street, would anyone be getting knee surgery? I think people would actually be bullied out of a lot of things. If you, if you went to get like your teeth straightened with braces or something, you know, some kind of procedure which takes some portion of your life, like, or you have to take a pill or something because otherwise you get headaches or whatever. But also like half of employers in the country said they wouldn't hire you because of it like people would stop doing that medicine wouldn't they but they aren't people trans people aren't stopping because it's so important anyway right so crucial <laughs> to our well-being yeah so if oh. you want to get involved in that discussion you can go check out that poll on the community tab on the line really quick before we get to these calls because i do want to get moving on to them we've got full lines uh upcoming and this week on shows uh, we don't actually have a whole lot scheduled. Uh, it looks like it's going to be Jimmy and Matt. <laughs> but normally oh, we do. I was scroll like I was actually subscribe. scrolled off a little bit. Uh, Jimmy and Matt, this Sunday on the Sunday show, if you want to talk about religion, God, or theism, that is the place to do it. That's Sunday at 2 p.m. Central Time. On Monday on Skep Talk, it'll be hosted by Aaron Ra with an unconfirmed guest. This Tuesday at 6 p.m. Central Time will be the premiere episode of our new woman-led atheist show, uh, we still haven't exactly settled on a name. Uh, there's been a couple thrown out there, but we'll probably not decide until like two minutes before airtime. But if you want to watch that, it'll be hosted by Shannon Q and Eve was framed. Love Eve. Glad to see her on the network more regularly. Uh, next Wednesday on the hangup will be, uh, Matt Dillahunty with John Gleason, the, uh, godless engineer. And then next week it'll be, I think it's Katie and I back again next week, uh, 2.15. Do you know? Do you know that, Katie? Did you know you're on next week no again? I have no idea. <laughs> I didn't know I was on today. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, that is the next week in shows. So if you want to check out all of that, definitely subscribe and do all the things like comment, whatever the fuck I'm supposed to tell you to do. Uh, there are other things to announce, but let's get to a call and we can do some of that later. I want to do six, four and seven, five. Do you have a, a pref? Whatever you feel first, I'm good with. Let's go straight in with a potentially spicy caller. We are going to talk to Lee from Australia, who wants to talk about skepticism and trans people. Lee, can you hear us? Yes, how are you doing? Hello. Great, thanks. So, you want to talk about skepticism. It's one of my topics that I like to talk about. Go for it. Mm-hmm. 
Okay, so I'd like to um, talk about a, well, a scenario that comes up now and then when um, dealing with um, religious people. Sometimes they'll make the argument that um, um, I know Jesus exists or I know God exists or Allah or whoever it may be because I have walked alongside him and um, I have felt the presence of Jesus or I have felt the guidance of God, blah, blah, blah. I make a claim about um, feeling the majesty of their particular religion, and it will um, they will claim that it is a direct experiential um, proof of God. I've walked along with him. He's spoken to me or whatever it may be. Um, and the usual response from a skeptic is um, exactly what I would say to them. It's like um, I would say, um, uh, yes, you may have felt this awe, this majesty, this whatever it was, but that is not evidence uh, that Jesus exists or Allah or whoever it is. What you've done is you've felt something and then you've put your own interpretation on that feeling. We can yeah. not necessarily dispute the feeling that you had because that's personal entirely. And um, uh, if you experienced it, you know, okay, we'll generally accept that you felt a certain way, but we can discuss or quibble or even just dispute the interpretation you made of that feeling. Yeah. Um, okay. So you felt majesty or whatever, however they phrased it. I felt that too. When I'm um, looking at, uh, in my case, Uluru as rock, it was amazing, but you know, it's that, that the feeling, the, um, the interpretation that a person puts on it can be disputed. And I find that um, when the person, by contrast, says, um, I know that I'm a man or a woman in some sort of internal sense, people will phrase that uh, quite variously. Um, yep. They'll make a similar sounding um, claim. I, I, I feel a certain way. I am interpreting that, or they, they won't call it an interpretation usually. I am um, definitely a man or woman on side because I, I feel that way. I know it. I would say, very sure. similarly, you feel a certain way. Okay, fair enough. But we can quibble. We can dispute the interpretation. That doesn't make one necessarily a uh, man or woman due to a feeling. We, we you know, uh, I'm, I think I'm... Uh, babbling and repeating myself now but um, no no i i, I, hear, I hear what you're saying lee <clears throat> i think you presented uh, your point quite well uh and clearly so that's cool and also i'd love to see as rock i i hope i get to see it one day it sounds really cool or wh whatever the proper word for it is um i think that Crazy. um yeah i bet it's mega i i i think that it's best to i guess acknowledge that there are some things <laughs> Just trying to think of the best angle to come in for this on, on it with. But perhaps I'll start with the clearest way that I can draw a separation. Um, mm -hmm. or, or explain uh, something that we can... So, okay, right. A way of um, saying that something is, like, measurably true is that we can make predictions based on a model. So we can create a model of how we think the world works, and we can make predictions... And if they turn out to be true or like better than a coin flip random, then there's some kind of predictive power to our model. And it in some way describes reality to some amount. Would you agree with that? Maybe not the best explanation of the scientific method, but... Let's, let's go with it. It's an approach, sir. sure. Yeah. So, I mean, like uh, one way we might say if we were looking at like particle physics, we can say, oh, well, we think this is how this certain particle acts, and if it acts this way, then we should be able to do this experiment and see these results, and then we test it uh, so many times, and we make an estimation about whether this could happen with by random chance or not, and then if our prediction is better than random chance, then we're like, oh, we're pretty sure this is how the world works, and then we base our next models on that, and so on. Um, with religious claims, with things like claims about prayer, with claims that someone's seen an alien with claims that you know all of these kind of classic skeptic claims we encounter there is no predictive power from any of them we can have mm -hmm. people saying uh you know i 
walked with Jesus and I feel happy. Uh, and you could probably find that there was some predictive power in that people who claim to walk with Jesus felt happier after it. Like we, we can probably draw that kind of prediction, but we can't do some kind of prediction like um, we know that people who claim to have spoken to God and say that there's going to be an earthquake in six days or whatever. There's no predictive power to any of these claims. There's no predictive power to, um, you know, we can't create a model. We can't make any predictions based on, on lots of these claims. That doesn't mean necessarily that they're false, but it means that we can't show that they're true. For trans people, one major difference with that is we can actually make really good predictions based on a diagnosis criteria, which you could call it, um, of whether someone is suffering from gender dysphoria or someone is trans, however you want to describe it, uh, we know pretty accurately who is going to benefit from medical transition and social transition and who isn't. Uh, we do have a lot of examples of trans people who we have decided as we as in the you know the human community the medical community have come up with a di diagnosis criteria and they've said these people will probably benefit from medical transition and we have loads of examples of them benefiting we also have some examples of where they've been wrong in that in the sense that they've diagnosed someone and then they've detransitioned we also sadly have examples of people where they haven't diagnosed them and they have forcibly transitioned anyway and in all of those cases they have you know, suffered massively and have wanted to detransition. Um, <clears throat> there is, there should be no cases of that ever, but there actually have been some, which is grim. Uh, and we have, when I say we've got a very good predictive ability on that, I mean, you might be able to say, oh yeah, you know, if, if it was more, if it was like 51% of the case versus 49%, that'd be, maybe there's some predictive power here, but like the diagnosis rates, or oh, people diagnosed as being, having gender dysphoria who get given the um the treatment for that like it's under one percent who feel like they were misdiagnosed or regret it uh so obviously there's some predictive power here and that is you know we can say that's n like you were kind of saying about whether someone is really a man or a woman um and i that isn't the, the claim that i'm addressing because that doesn't predict whether someone is a man or a woman it doesn't come up with a definition for man or woman what it does is it shows, I think, that proves that there is at least something here, that trans people are a thing of sorts, because we have some model that we can predict for that. The issue is that when it comes to a claim of what makes someone really a man or really a woman, is that a lot of people come to that discussion with the premise that there is an objective definition of man and woman. And so whenever you say, oh, well, no, because, you know, this person's a woman because they said so, or because, oh, that's actually the best way to find out who's a man or a woman is to ask them, or, or whatever. You are sitting on the premise of, but they're objectively not. So you feel like it's ridiculous, but the problem is, is that premise is wrong. Uh, it's unjustified. And, I mean, maybe you disagree and we can discuss that. But what that means is that we don't have because we don't have an objective definition of what a man is and what a woman is we inevitably have a subjective one and you know it's it is actually the same for everything outside of maths most things outside of maths don't have objective definitions and they just seem to in our day-to-day -day lives because we all kind of agree what a chair is we all kind of agree what a table is we all kind of agree what esrock is but there is actually fuzzy edges to all of these things, and there is room for argument in all of them, or quibbles, as you said. Um, and a good word. You know, yeah, it is a good word. Um, we can have discussions about what a man and a woman really are, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, but we've also got to bear in mind that when we're having a discussion about what a chair is, it doesn't really matter because you're going to sit on them anyway. If, if you're telling me that what I'm sat on now isn't a chair, like I can tell you're an idiot, but like it doesn't matter when we're talking about trans people and you're saying oh well i don't really think you're a woman or whatever in an abstract sense i don't care like you're an idiot i don't mind whatever but the, in a political real sense that actually affect my lives people are trying to take away my human rights with that as their justification so that is why the discussion about this becomes a bit heated and people start saying things like fuck off you don't know who i am uh which is why mm -hmm. this show is here mm -hmm.
Arden, I felt like you needed to cut in loads of times and I just talked over you. No, Go it's okay. It. <laughs> I only have two short things to add. Um, I would agree that with pretty much everything you're saying and that it doesn't necessarily demonstrate that someone is a man or a woman, but what it does do is demonstrate the existence of the construct of gender identity, in my view. That's what I would call what is demonstrated there. Yes. And secondly, I would disagree with you, Katie, on whether or not there's any predictive power with prayer. However... <laughs> There have been studies on prayer and the predictive power when somebody doesn't know they're being prayed for is exactly the same as chance. And when they do know they're being prayed for, their rates of recovery in like a hospital setting were actually worse. So uh, the so okay. we do have a predictive model around prayer and that Magic is, is that it's fucking bogus. <laughs> um, yeah. Like okay. it, that's how different gender identity and, you know, prayer and religious claims are. Like we can actually actively debunk a lot of religious claims obviously not all that's why we still have things like the sunday show because there are some that are just unfalsifiable that we'll probably debate about until the end of time but there are some that we can actively debunk like no that is actually factually not true there is no basis for that belief in reality whereas when it comes to somebody having a gender identity that would benefit from medical transition there is a strong basis for that but anyway lee i want to know we just yeah it was a lot you thrown at you that? Okay, well, um, uh, the word meaning is um, one sort of offshoot of that. And um, it, you said that it's, there's, there's debate or there's no firm um, definition or objective definition of what uh, any particular word means outside of um, uh, rigorously defined things in mathematics or science or whatever. And that's, yeah. I, I agree with that because um, word meanings outside of technical jargon are arrived at by common consensus and history right. and they do gradually change and there's um a uh, uh well dictionaries describe common use of um words they don't prescribe what the meaning must be mm -hmm. so Absolutely. dictionary researchers Absolutely. look through usage and will just record how it is typically used and maybe um, common uses versus less common um, idiosyncratic or local meanings or whatever it may be. So by that um, measure, uh, yeah, sure, man and woman are um, relatively fuzzily um, defined compared to uh, technical jargon. But it has yeah. been a meaning that has been um, set um, without much change for... Uh, I've heard various reports, something like six centuries or something like that. It's varied, um, depending on the source I look at. Um, yeah. So we can, um, we can. There is a pretty strong history, a, uh, a lengthy history of um, man meaning male person, meaning the sex of a person, and female a woman meaning a female person, meaning again the sex. I've also noticed There's that premise I was talking um, about. <laughs> Americans very commonly uh, use gender as something like a, a synonym for sex. Um, yeah. I think even the poll question today, oh, I've lost it, uh, closed that window, but the poll question today um, exhibited that same thing, uh, using Did gender it? to refer to, I think, if it's the one I'm thinking of, uh, something about um, driver's licenses having... Um, oh, well, I think oh, yeah. it depends Marker. on what the legal name for it is. Right, yeah, I said gender slash sex marker, marker, but that's because in some cases it's referred some to legally it. as a gender marker, in some cases it's sex marker. That wasn't uh, an okay, attempt yeah. to... It's just an unfortunate yeah. aspect yeah. of the law, yeah. but go on. In British law, actually, yeah. mixes the two up. So. Uh, I, was, I wonder what mine says. Well, yeah, it was, it was kind of funny because mine doesn't mention any descriptor of me at all. Um, except it does have a photo. Uh, so it doesn't mention male or so, female or anything. Does so it anyway, not? I, Amazing. I, I, okay. You don't have to nope. tell me where you are, but I'd be very interested in what like state that is. I'm also, I also feel South like South Australia. when you're saying that, you know, okay. the definition of man and women has remained stable for like six centuries or something. I, I think I, I'd like to push back on that because kind mm. of like we're talking about when, you know, if we're going to use like adult human female or whatever, right? how mm -hmm. female was conceptualized even just a century or two ago was nothing like it is in like the 1900s and later. I, I know there were some theories that uh, 
females were like underdeveloped males essentially for mm. quite a long time. So I, well, I appreciate, I, I generally agree with the sentiment Made that you're conveying. I, I, I do. I don't think it's completely off base, but I'm just saying that like, sometimes I think when we say things like the definition of man and woman has been relatively stable over six centuries, we think that people six centuries ago had the same concept of man and women that we do now. And I just think that is not like, it's evidently not the case. Um, well, no, they, they did, certainly didn't have the same knowledge of the biology of uh, male and female. And they had uh, lengthy periods where there were incorrect models of development of male and female. And there was claim that, you know, sperm was a uh, a homunculus, a miniature right. person <laughs> and, and so on and so forth. But they, they still knew, they still recognized that there was a difference between um, the population... Did this half and that half. Um, and they knew that it was reproductive difference and um, incorrect theories aside, it was still a um, standard by which they did divide um, humanity but, and right. Mm. But Lee, if I traveled back in time to then, I don't know, maybe it doesn't have to be me. Maybe it, cause maybe you think that I obviously look like a standard bloke. But maybe if you were p to pick like the ultimate passingist trans woman who you can think of, if they, if she travelled back, like Alden, if she travelled back in time um, to these times, and you were like, is that a man or a woman? What do you think they'd say though? Because but like, you say they clearly recognise the difference, and they don't know about biology. Yeah, maybe don't do Alden. Mm. But you know, if if there were going to be, uh, maybe I would just cut the the giving an example, but. Do you agree with the idea that there are at least some trans people who, were they to travel to those times, would be classified how they saw themselves? Yep. Yes. And yeah. also trans men. Yeah. Although absolutely. I find trans men find it easier what with testosterone giving beard powers. Um, yeah. And, and deep voice magic. An, yeah. Yeah. I don't think there's an equivalent uh, power from estrogen and all that but oh, um, yeah, make a big difference certainly be convinced. <laughs> but they, um, they could, and i think I, I think convinced is the wrong way to look at it because to them it would just be knowing like it's just that's just what they see if 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 they didn't get to you know they don't even know what chromosomes are they don't even know that the concept of transition exists they're not even going to mm -hmm. think of it they're just going to they're going to know it in the sense that you know the classic if you look at the clock and it's stopped but it's actually the correct time did you know at the time or did you just believe the time? Yeah. That kind of paradox. But like, it, it's it's knowledge in that sense, uh, and it it fits their definition at the time, and and I guess that that would yeah. be my pushback onto this. You know, we've known what a man is, and known what a woman is for six hundred years or whatever. Like, yeah. Well, but I mean, they didn't have, have much investigative whole... method. I'll give you that. Yeah. Um, but, but also, but would... hmm? I mean, trans people have been around for a long time and have we've had medical transition for like 100 years now uh so i mean it's a, a, and at least longer than i've been alive there have been trans women like going stealth you know passing into society and just kind of disappearing mm -hmm. off the radar and being decided as by every single person they meet as a woman and if that's how they see themselves, then we could say, I mean, you could do a thing where you're like, oh, on, on this person's death, we've exhumed them and we found out that they don't actually have a uterus. And I've decided that the definition of woman is you must have a uterus or, so, or something like that. The, the issue is that's kind of what it always comes down to. I, the premise that I mentioned, which is false at the start, of this kind of like this idea of a one dimensional, maybe not, maybe you don't think it's binary, but a one dimensional sex value where you're like either one or the other maybe some people even think it's like a sliding scale it's just not really how it works like it's a multi-dimensional property with loads of different all of your sex characteristics all can have different values and they usually come in one of two common combinations but you know, there are people born who don't fit into those boxes and also people who transition into places i mean you could describe um someone like me who has transitioned medically as not fitting into either of the two common boxes because probably my chromosomes are XY. Uh, so at least one of my sex characteristics isn't typical. And, you know, there's probably a whole mm -hmm. bunch of others. So if, if you had traveled back uh, centuries, it's very possible yeah. that they would regard, um, and you said, I'm a woman, 
uh, it's very possible that those people would regard you as perhaps intersex if they were confused. I don't know how passing Possibly. you want there's, to um, be. Um, you there's are, a, but, an interesting. Um, there's an interesting case. I think it's from the USA. I, I don't have the details of this firsthand, and I only got this from listening to an interview about someone who wrote it in a book. However, mm. <clears throat> they were discussing a case. It was on the um, Factually by Adam Conover podcast, if you go and listen to his one, he interviewed a non-binary person. And they were talking about um, a legal case in the USA when it was first starting up, where there was some person and they were accused of fornication or something, you know, some kind of classical crime where... They were having sex and they shouldn't have been. And um, the the start of the proceedings was, are you a man or a woman? And they declared, I am a man and a woman. And then there was a whole, apparently a third of the village weighed in and decided whether this person was a man or a woman. And they had to get all like judges involved in everything and the doctors in. And then they just decided, yes, this person is a man and a woman and ruled as such. So they actually ended up ruling. The punishment for this person was that they had to, by law, always wear both male and female dress. So if they were to wear a suit, they had to like have flowers in their hair. And if they were to wear a dress, they had to have a top hat or something. Like create, like, <laughs> sounds totally mad to us, but like that was the actual ruling. But importantly, that was, they, they even found, counted something and it didn't really fit into what they thought. I mean, I mean, we don't know if this person was trans or intersex or wh how would they describe themselves. We just, Well, we know they described themselves as a man and a woman. The, the thing is, it, they didn't fit into the boxes they had at the time, so they just made a new one. Um, anyway, what it, I think, it is, yeah. I, I do accept this kind of historical, like, oh, you know, if you went back in time to, like, 30 years ago or n longer, 130 years ago, and were like, this person is like a non-binary queer person. They would be like, what the fuck is that? And you could say mm. that maybe that meant that that category didn't exist then at all. But you could also say there were people then who were trying to express similar things and they didn't have the words for them in those times. Um, and then we kind of get down to this like, do categories exist if we don't have words for them kind of argument but as a skeptic what interests me is that underneath underlying stuff like that we're trying to describe i feel like our descriptions are similar to the scientific method in that we are trying to describe the world and as we come up with more understanding and more words we can better model the world with the words we have um <clears throat> and we are just kind of progressing with that in understanding trans people as a society. I th okay. I, I think there may be a bit of a um, conflation of two um, concepts here. Um, there is, um, on the one hand, um, the ontology of a thing, what it is uh, in the abstract. Yeah. And then there is the epistemology of how we investigate what it is, um, how we come yeah. to our conclusions and what evidence we have. It is very possible for a person to look like such and such, man or woman or some other thing, um, some other category, if you like. Um, and it is possible to fool people, if you like, into convincing people that uh, oh, I'm a police officer or something because I've put the uniform on and I know how to talk the talk. But then there is the abstract truth of the question. Am I actually a police officer? Um, what makes someone a police officer? That is not necessarily the case. Well, in this state, it means you got sworn in uh, after passing certain training. So it's not really... Right, so it's just like some social convention, isn't it? Outwardly, outwardly shown by um, uniform and uh, ID badge. So... Yeah, it's just, it's just a social convention, of, though, isn't it? Right, kind of on that note, if it's just yeah. a social convention where someone can be sworn in as a police officer, uh, what what is the uh, objective criteria that makes someone a woman ontologically in your eyes? I would love to know. Uh, the femaleness or um, uh, the, What's the anatomy it? of a person, the anatomy of their um, body. What, well, what bits do they need? I mean, what do we need to measure? About modern... I've got their gametes, I've got their human genitals. About... Like, yeah. Let... <laughs> yep. We've spoken about yeah, historical bit? and present. So um, the, the knowledge Today. certainly has been fleshed out over the centuries. 
Um, but outwardly, if we were just looking at a person, we would go by the um, anatomy visible. The, so yeah, um, what sometimes it? You, it may, it's possible that you might read, uh, let's say, a, um, a page of information about an in, intersex condition, let's say. Um, so uh, let's say we were talking about a um, confusing case of um, androgen insensitivity. Um, that would be a person who is female um, because even though they have the Y chromosome, that person has the body that has developed down the female pathway and they have developed anatomy, which is classified as female. So, so when well, we talk well, about a person's well, well, sex... Yeah, I, I, uh, I just need to... So you're saying... I've heard most gender criticals argue that androgen insensitive people with androgen sensitivity syndrome are in fact males who only appear female, but you are explicitly arguing that no. the visible characteristics are what makes someone female. So if a trans woman has genital surgery in your eyes, then this person has become female. It means they have taken on the appearance of female. But you just said the um, definition which... is the appearance, right? Yeah, you just defined it as the, the visible characteristics. It's, yeah, the, the, anat the so anatomy. When we say it's the anatomy of the body. Fire, um, Lee, uh, what's it called? Hang on a sec, Lee. Hang on. No, we're not trying to be like knobheads about this. Uh, when you say anatomy, like you mean, do you mean like things like genitals? Uh, do you also mean like internal sex organs like uterus, fallopian tubes? Do you, do you mean testicles? So you. Uh, all of this stuff? Do you also mean like breasts and phenotype facial hair? Sex, as opposed to genetic. Yeah, okay, phenotype. So, pheno so phenotype generally covers all of... It's like all the stuff you can see on uh, like sexually dimorphic yep. things. So that includes, so just for the audience, that includes genitals, uh, gonads, and then secondary sex characteristics such as facial hair and breasts. Um, so if we are defining femaleness as you put it as and, and maleness by phenotype what we are doing is we are looking at enough people a lot of people and saying oh look most people look like one kind of group or the other kind of group so they're the two boxes we're going to call one of them male and we're going to call one of them female and the way we are sorting people is looking at the sum of their visible sex characteristics and maybe some that we can't see like their internal ones like the gonads because both male and female people can have internal gonads, or you can have internal gonads that are testicles and or ovaries. Um, and if we just include all those things, like the physical structures that are not microscopic, um, then we have those things that I listed. And I guess Arden's question then is like, if you, you change one of them, if you change some of them, and if you change all of them, at what point does someone in your mind hop over from one box to the other and or is there a gray area in the middle because if it's just down to phenotype i would argue that transition can just totally change your phenotype like we yeah. have the technology to fully change your phenotype uh maybe would you would argue that only out, happens if people transition young enough but most i would, I would point something. out that there are physical differences between um the surgical products that are um created to um resemble uh, penis, vulva, uh, and um, okay, but now you're pushing breath. the. See, this is the problem, Lee, that I have whenever I get into this conversation. Now you're pushing the goalposts back. Now it's no longer uh, uh, the visible sex characteristics. Now it's the visible sex characteristics organized in a specific way. Also, well, I would like to add that apart from one type of GRS for trans women, which is penile inversion surgery, all of the other surgeries we have. We're actually made for cis people. So there are cis men who have penises constructed with penis... Oh, I can't remember the word for it. Penis construction surgery, I don't know. Um, but there are also... Phalloplasty. Phalloplasty. Um, yeah. And but there are also cis women who have vaginas created with uh, PPV and the other one, which I've also forgotten the name of. Um, but so that means that there are cis women who also fall, have, they, they, there are cis women alive who have the same kind of, they have breasts, they have like soft skin, they don't have facial hair, their body's mainly estrogen compared to testosterone, and their vagina 
was created surgically and they don't have a uterus or fallopian tubes. So either we're saying that trans women and those cis women are in the same box phenotypically, or we're saying there's something that differs them, which as a skeptic, I assume you believe is a material characteristic rather than a supernatural mm -hmm. non-material one. But if there is, yep. what is that material characteristic? Well, it is the um, anatomy of a person. There are anatomical structures that just, are split. But yes, which, which one? Roughly 50% split that uh, divides the yeah, human which, population. Wait, Lee, hang there on, isn't hang a on, single, Lee. there is no single Lee, hang on, hang on, hang on, characteristic Lee, Lee. that is male or female. Hmm? Yeah, yeah. So we've got what well, I've just described. We've got two people, right? Because you were saying, oh, it matters about whether the vagina is constructed surgically, for example. So we've got two people, and one of them I'm telling you is a trans woman, and one of them I'm telling you is a cis woman. They have, uh, you know, if, if you say that anatomy, I, I can list off, I can tell you what all their anatomy is. They both have the same size breasts. They, neither of them have facial hair. They have both got like the same skin texture. They both have surgically constructed vaginas. Neither of them have a uterus. There's a is there a difference between them? And if so, which, and you say anatomy, but which anatomical part? And I can tell you whether they're the, you know, we can, we can work out what they are. I've, I've got my little measurer. There's these two women stood in front of me or a man and a woman stood in front of me. Um, what am I, what am I measuring? What piece of anatomy differs them? There is no, there is no single piece of anatomy that is um, the what, what ultimate anatomy, decider. What selection of things? There are, yeah. however, all of, all of the anatomies are, um, Aside from the ones that all humans have in common, like a nose or whatever, um, yeah, we have a division in them. We've noticed over the millennia that um, some people have this and some people have that, and the collections yeah. do travel together um, statistically, extremely strongly linked. We have classified mm -hmm. the whole bunch of this set of anatomy, and English calls them male, and the other category, yeah. uh, a whole bunch of features are called female. Each feature. Uh, from one side or the other is a male anatomical feature or a female anatomical feature. And we talk yep. about a pe person's phenotype by looking at a whole bunch of them. There is no okay. one ultimate thing like, oh, a um, gland's penis as opposed to clitoris or something. Aha. That's yeah, the one. okay. It's not, it's not like that. So, 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 <laughs> if we have a cis woman and a trans woman, and both of them have surgically constructed vaginas, which list out all of the anatomical differences that separate them. Uh, the, uh, well, there are actual differences between the... Um, list them, uh, please. Uh, yep. So a, a, a um, constructed vulva vagina from... Um, which they both have. They uh, both have. <laughs> No, uh, but they have them differently, different origin. Remember, one of them originally had a penis, and mm -hmm. the um, well, maybe. Uh, construction of a vagina in that case is uh, eversion of the penile skin into the um, pelvic well, they could cavity. Have PPV, well, I can't remember how to say that, perineal also, pull through. The, yeah, they, the, that's the, where they take a piece of the intestinal lining. Um, as no, no, it's of... not the intestinal one. That's the other one oh. I was thinking of. No, uh, it's uh, peritoneal pull-through vaginoplasty. Uh, it's oh, um, peritoneal. It's, it's probably you can yeah you can you can actually uh, have a situation. You could do it on someone who was born with a penis, and they could have a vagina and a penis at the same time, because it uses different uh, technique entirely and doesn't use the penile skin. Uh, I'm not familiar with that specific surgery. Um, uh, you'll have to look it up and call and back. Um, regardless, I. Mean? The, yeah. regardless you are you're saying like oh well one started as a penis but that's not what your definition was your definition is the yeah. observable characteristics from the external which if they both yes, had the same procedure anatomically distinct those, well, we could zoom in and we could look at the cells however. right we could zoom in yep. and look at the cells or something so what mm -hmm. what is what cells are we looking for i mean are, are they different is this something you know well, about or is um, this just a claim uh, yeah, there is um, a difference between mucosal lining, which is uh, what the uh, vagina. Uh, but if they got have. the same method, in, is that and, actually true? Well, in in in, uh, I think you're um, you only know about uh, penile inversion surgery, where that is largely true, um, but that isn't the only types of GRS. There are 
at least four. Because uh, I forgot, I said earlier three, but I actually meant four because I forgot the um, intestinal one that Arden was talking about. Um, but interestingly, uh, in the tie method, or at least the main tie method, and also PPV, both of them uh, can, can um, I don't actually know how the term to explain this, can cause or use cells which do redifferentiate uh, and create mucus and it means that um, trans women who have and cis women who have those surgeries uh, will uh, I'm trying to say this in a science way they can get wet when they're horny basically um, which mm -hmm. isn't true as far as I know from penile inversion surgery and that's one of the pros and cons when picking those two uh, picking between those surgery methods um, I guess we could zoom in and we could get to the point where we're like well, the majority of the skills, skin cells on the surface of this one can create mucus or lining, but only 60% on this one. Like, then we end up having to get into this position where we're looking at numbers or percentages. Um, and I have a feeling we, maybe that Lee's can... definition of female isn't actually the percent of cells that have a sufficient mucosal <laughs> lining in their goddamn pussy. So let's, like, <laughs> like actually analyze what we're saying here, I... right? I, I feel like we could do more of this call. I think we've reached a good point. We have talked for over half an hour. I think, Lee, mm -hmm. if you would like, I am not going to tell you to go away and read loads of information on vaginas, but if you would like to, you could go away and read about some of the other um, things. And maybe you can call back in and be like, okay, I've sussed it. Here's the difference between a trans woman and cis women who have both had peritoneal pull through vaginoplasty. Because one of them's Under cells that. will be expressing this protein or something, and we can argue about whether that's phenotype or genotype or epigenetics or whatever. Um, but that would be a great second call. And then we could say whether that means that there's an objective definition, an objective split between them, and whether it's relevant to society or law. But we can do it in another call. Lee, I have really enjoyed this call, and honestly, I could yeah. talk for hours more, but we do have to get on to someone else. No, it was a, you were a good <laughs> right caller, Lee. Yeah, Thank yeah. you for calling Take in. On. Move on. No worries. Bye. He's around. Fight. Mm. All right. Uh, yeah, I have so many more thoughts I want to give, but Me I don't want to do that to Lee while he's not here because Lee's actually <laughs> honest. I don't mind doing that with shitheads when they leave, but not when yeah. somebody's actually honest. So save it. So wait, there was another caller that I really wanted to take. Which ones? Uh, uh, I think that caller dropped. Oh, did we return oh, to the queue? They used to have all of the drop ones at the bottom, but it's not at the bottom anymore. Okay. They go away um, after a time. Uh, oh, okay. Oh, we, we were talking to Lee for a long time. Uh, I hope everyone enjoyed that. <laughs> if there's none that feel like they're pressing to you, we could just start taking them in order they came in because I feel bad when people wait. Yeah, for... let's do that. Okay. okay. Let's talk to William in Arizona, maybe. Is that AR? Arkansas. Um, Arkansas, sorry, William. Uh, William, you want to talk about breast cancer risks. Go for it. Uh, yeah. Um, so this kind of came up, and I've been trying to uh, line it up to talk to Dr. Ben as well, because this is basically right up his wheelhouse. Um, but uh, I keep missing Dr. Ben, so I figured... Y'all trans women, y'all might have had this uh, experience or talk or whatever as well. Uh, like, my mom had a form of breast cancer that is specifically estrogen fed. And uh, she had to take hormone blockers to um, oh, put it in remission, essentially. And yeah. I was thinking, if I were to uh, begin transitioning with uh, hormones, would that be something that is, you know... Uh, a, a higher risk at that point, even though I'm assigned male at birth, and I don't think breast cancer is as common in assigned male at birth people. Yeah, but it's true. not impossible. But you know, having that particular, uh, you know, sort of thing, I breast can't word. Yeah, no, no, you're doing great. <laughs> um, yeah, no, that's a good question, William. I, I think so. It was a general comment about um medical transition for trans women and breast cancer uh, absolutely your risk of breast cancer goes up if you have breasts um the mm. there's actually a lot of factors in it because uh there's not just volume of breast tissue because there's also density and there's uh structures and all of this kind of stuff which all can mm -hmm. 
factor into breast cancer. And also there is the length of time you've had breasts for. If you transition in your late 70s, your overall risk of cancer is higher, but your rate of breast cancer isn't going to suddenly shoot up from the average level for a cis man to the average level of a cis woman. If you transition when you're okay. 13, then it is likely going to, because you've had breasts for the same amount of time and they've had the same uh, amount of time to develop. There's also like how far your breasts develop. Some trans women who transition later find their breasts don't develop uh, the whole way uh, in terms of tanner stages, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So in general, yes, it can, it will increase the risk of breast cancer for all trans women who have a reaction to estrogen, which is like the vast majority. In your particular case, mm -hmm. it sounds like there is. I mean, there are a lot of different possible causes for cancer and some of them are genetic some of them are you know environmental some of them are passed mm -hmm. down some of them aren't and i wouldn't want to possibly comment on a specific one when i'm not a doctor i don't know about you etc but what i would say is it's definitely mm. something that you should investigate because if it is a genetic risk and you are taking estrogen and especially like you say it's a estrogen fed cancer i don't know enough about cancers to comment on what that means but that sounds like at the very least you should discuss that with a doctor who knows about hormone levels and cancer um an endocrinologist yeah. uh you know a specialist someone who knows about breast cancer maybe even the per people who help treat your mum. um and that doesn't mean the, the, the thing to be wary of is some people who, um, like, obviously there are some doctors who know about trans people and there are some who don't. There are some who mm -hmm. don't care about trans people and there are some who dislike trans people. You would be able to find a doctor somewhere in the world who would say, this will increase your chance of breast cancer, therefore you shouldn't transition, end of story. And that is... As a blanket answer, that's garbage. It is quite possible that they could say your risk of breast cancer would be so high that it would reduce your life expectancy to six months or something crazy, in which case you shouldn't transition. That would be a fair analysis. But I think it would be worth finding out from them what the odds are looking. Because if you go from one in a 10 million to two in 10 million, that is doubling your rate. But it is still so low, and it's that still maybe... yeah, it's still significantly uh, nothing. <laughs> I think yeah. there's also yeah. uh, yeah, now I obviously not, not a doctor. I know Ben is not able to be on for the whole month of February. I don't think so. Um, sorry for all of you who are ah, waiting to get sad. a call with him. Uh, I, I believe there are also tests you can get which specifically can evaluate the specific genetic risk factors you have, and the ones that are maybe even epigenetic and correlate with like hormonal. Oh, uh, uh, changes and stuff. So it, there's probably a test you can get done out there somewhere that could tell you exactly what your risk profile is with regard to breast cancer. Um, but I couldn't tell you where to get that or how that works. So I just know that's a thing that exists. Yeah, already. Thank you. Uh, that's pretty much it. I'm sorry to have you wait on an hour for us to not know <laughs> really how to answer your question. Well. Fine, I I I kind of already figured, like like I said, I just figured y'all would have more of a real life potential experience there, uh, yeah, like discussions uh, y'all might have had. I I, I think knows? um, I mean my experience of it so far is I worry about everything medical. I'm like a hypochondriac basically, <laughs> and um, like, I'm not trying to be dismissive. Fair. I genuinely worry about every single medical condition. And when someone's like, the first symptom of meningitis is a headache and an aversion to lights, I'm like, I've got a headache. Like instantly, but um, no, I have I have worried about breast cancer because on the NHS uh, in the UK, they will send you letters mm -hmm. about having checks for breast cancer and cervical screening and various other things. The whole system is just binary. So if they have you down as a man, they'll send you the prostate cancer one, and if they have you down as a woman, they'll send you the cervical smear and the breast cancer one, and. I, they don't care or know about trans people. I don't really know what the, the rule, like not the rules, the guidelines for trans people are. I, I feel like I'm in a stage of my life where, 
Uh, I don't need to worry yeah. about this. Is there so, background sound with the caller, or is that with you, Katie? There, I definitely it's hear like me. a man's voice or something. Or some, oh, it's, it might be my roommate. Sorry. Okay. No, no, no uh, worries. I just was trying to make sure. Like, I, I, I tried to yeah. fix it, but I couldn't do anything else on my end. So I was like, "What's Tell happening?" Tell him to fuck I, I off. No. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I would. I would. Uh, I, I, I mean, I have before. They know. They'll tell me to do that right back. <laughs> We're cool. Yeah, I, I guess I've worried about this because, um, you know that it is a lot of people get cancer. Something like a third of people die of cancer, don't they? Yeah. So it, it is something yeah. worth being aware of. And I feel like I've just stuck my head in the sand a bit, and I just think that's. A, Something for my a bit later life, but I mean, mm. you can't really say that. Is and, it and it is nice something fan? to blend out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm not. I'm not Anna Skywalker. I like. I like sand. Um. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Thanks, William. Um, but yeah, I hope that that's not really much of a personal experience. But what I would say is just try and find a doctor you feel you can trust and ask them. Mm -hmm. And whatever answer they give is probably going to be scary yeah, and cool. take some time to absorb it and uh, then make again. your decision and call back in if you need to. Talk to Ben. Mm. Will do. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks William. Get, Thanks, try William. to get him on sooner. Bye. Yes. <laughs> yeah. We'll do our best. Bye. Bye. It's Ben's fault for being lazy. He's just, <laughs> all he's doing is flipping being in the army and being a doctor. I mean, how much effort can that take? I know. Um, I have closed the lines. Uh, before we take this next caller, uh, we're going to, there's two people left on the line. We're going to get to both of you. Okay. We were going to get to everyone, but then the third person dropped. So unfortunate, but if you're, if you're hearing me right now, we're going to try our best to get to you uh, shortly. Only thing I want to push is to remind you guys that uh, there is merch available over at linemerch.com. If you want your forest never had a bad day, I think this one's still available. If not, there's the you're on the line shirt, the line all over print hoodie, uh, the pink and yellow ones that are really cool, and the line mug. Uh, and also support us over on Patreon. Patreon.com slash call the line is the best way to support the line so that we can fly Katie over here to the US for uh, LineCon maybe towards the end of the year. Katie and I have known each other. God, so we started the show three years ago, almost exactly. It was in March. It was three years ago. Really? And I think we've been working together for like six months before that on various projects. So it's crazy. Yeah, after uh, doing activist we'll stuff like that, that yeah. for so long, we haven't actually met in person. It'd be so cool. All right. Let's take these last two callers. Uh, okay. First, let's take Safina, who's been waiting on the line for... Is that... Did you have... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Awesome. Okay. All right. Safina in New York. Pronouns are she and he. Safina, you are live on the line. What's going on? Hello, 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 ladies. Uh, first of all, I have to say is that both of you just add such a whole bunch of uh, zing and wing and razzmatazz to the show. You just make it pop. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Safina. You guys, you two are my fa yeah. You two are my favorite duo on this show. Like when you two are on, I'm like, who's on the Transatlantic All In Show? Oh, Katie and Arden, I'm totally there. I don't care if the apocalypse <laughs> happens, I'm there. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Mango. Yeah. Oh, Stay. and Arden, Arden, I caught, I caught, I caught on your OnlyFans, and I thing, I figured I'd you know pop in your OnlyFans account. Because, hey, why not, you know, give that uh, a shout out. Uh, but I caught it when you dressed up as Catwoman. Uh, and I figured since your channel was Hang monetized, on, I might get you I big money. I, I, um, I don't want to cut off Arden's income stream. Arden, you can talk about this if you want. But generally, we try and uh, keep the thing separate. Arden, would you like to Yeah, the, the only thing I was going to say is that I, I haven't been posting. I've actually pulled back. It's still up. So there's stuff that people who've been subscribed can check out. But I, I'm not... That's not a thing. I I am actually actively participating oh, not, in anymore. Oh, I'm, but I'm sorry if that was uncouth. Gee, I'm no, you're sorry. fine. It's all right. Let's get to your I question. What did you want to joke. talk? About? I wonder. I just want. Yeah, yeah, I just wanted to reference Catwoman. But uh, anyway, <laughs> uh, yeah, I wanted to talk about why do haters like, for example, like you got your fundamentalist haters, you're somewhere in between haters, and you're all the way out there liberal haters who aren't even Christians. Which I'm all like, hey, what? that H is up with that. Like, but like, at the same time, like, why can't they all just smoke a J and drink a Guinea and 
bloody chill out with it all. Like, we can take this from a psychological perspective, a sociological perspective, a moral ethical perspective, perhaps a philosophical perspective, but all of them, hey, when it comes to anthropology, mixes all up anyway. Yeah, I mean, it, if you kind of step back, the thing is, is that people care about the problems that affect their lives. You know, that's why I care about trans rights, and that's why, you know, I care about my job, and it's why I care about you know, all this kind of stuff in British politics that affects me. And they also care about stuff that they feel like empathy about. So, like, I care about the politics in Texas because that's where Arden lives. But the thing is, I also care about some stuff that doesn't affect me at all, I guess. Uh, but it's usually stuff like what bands have said and done because I like music and I'm just a nerd about it. But there are some people who seem to really care about stuff that doesn't affect them at all and doesn't actually matter, like whether someone else is trans or whether they're gay or whether they're left-handed or whether they you know, believe in a certain god or something. Um, if it doesn't affect you at all, then fuck off, basically. Um, but I think there are, like, looking at it, why do some people care? I mean, some people seem to... I, something I often have started responding to transphobes online with is like, get a hobby. Because does someone who has, or get some real problems, like does someone who has uh, some real problems in their life or someone who has like a purpose or a hobby or friends, do they really spend all their time hating on trans people online? And no, oh, it's yeah. pathetic. No. Like, it, lots of these people, particularly on the internet, particularly like the gender critical movement, like, that is their hobby. That is their friends. That is their personality. Like, they don't have anything else. And and that's why I often say it's like a cult, because that is how some people get sucked into cults. Not, not just, like, hate cults, but, like, ones where they're, like, cults of personality or, or um, you know, actual sort of religious cults or mystical cults or whatever. They often are vulnerable people who don't have friends and family, who sometimes do have real problems uh, that they want to distract from or that they're offered solutions to, either false or otherwise, and they get sucked into it. And then this cult is that suddenly they didn't have friends and family before, and now suddenly they do. Like, they didn't really have a purpose before, and now suddenly they do. They didn't really... You know, feel like they're achieving something and now suddenly they do and that is absolutely what we see with the gender critical movement i mean we see people who talk about how they lost all their friends and families because they said something transphobic and if there wasn't this international movement of people ready to scoop them up and validate every single thing they believe and tell them they're right and give them a load of friends and stuff they would probably you know give up on that because it's just bullshit but now, if you, like, for example, were to uh, fall out with your partner and uh, mother of your child and then lose your mind and get your <clears throat> child fired from their job, uh, people would ridicule you and you get run out of town because you'd be a piece of shit father. But now you can post that on Twitter and suddenly get a thousand likes and a load of people being sympathetic and a load of support and people saying you're doing a good thing in the world. Um, and now that's, like, you feel validated. That's given you a purpose. It's given you something to do. It's given you people to talk to. It's, and, and I think that's why we see so many people like it at the moment. I mean, there's always going to be a, ra like, lizard brain gut reaction. reaction. There's always going to be people who are like, see a trans person. They've never seen one before. They, they panic. They feel fear. They feel disgust. Like, there's going to be those raw emotions from idiots. But this kind of impassioned this is my life, this is my purpose, haters, I, I think it's like a cult, basically. Uh, I don't know what you think, Arden. Yeah, mm. I think that's pretty accurate. Mm. I mean, I, I, I'm i always nervous about using cult just because the line between where something is a cult and cult-like is like so ill-defined, in my view, that yeah. it's like difficult to... I don't want to saddle myself with some like burden that I don't need to. Uh, but I, I definitely agree, regardless of everything else you're saying, and... and that it's embarrassing. I, I love a good brawl with people online. You know, if that's what you're missing, go, let me tell you, I, I love to like 
I watch like all the Marvel stuff that comes out, right? I'm not like one of those people who's like read every single comic in the past and maybe I people will call me a poser or something, but I like to have strong, obnoxiously loud opinions on stuff that's very loud, mostly because it's just fun. Like we spend so much time arguing about things that are so serious and that actually affect people's lives that it's nice to be able to just be like, I like arguing and debating. So like an outlet for that, that doesn't have to be like, oh, but also if I'm wrong about this, that affects every well, element I... <laughs> of my life going forward. Or it can be like, instead I can be like, oh, you liked that one? That was the worst thing Marvel's ever done. You're stupid. And they can call me stupid. And then we can go on with our day because it doesn't actually matter, you know? Um, right. Yeah. You know, here's another question that comes to mind. With as many people, and you know, I'd like to get some numbers on this at some point in time and look into the numbers and see where the research is in or out when it comes to liberals and fundamentalist Christian groups and people, individuals who hate and just bash on the trans and LGBTQ plus rainbow community. Uh, and like, can we truly be free as a community? If, I mean, are we slaves in their thought and mind life? Like if they, if in their minds, they're sitting there and having a thought, I don't accept you as a man or a woman or gay or bisexual or whatever, what have you. Like, and you are this, and this is what you must be for you to be normal. Can we truly ever be free on the, until they're free as well? Yeah, I'm, uh, that's kind of an interesting question because I think it can be very easy to be, uh, like, doomery about this and think, like, we're never, not in our lifetimes, we're not going to get rid of transphobia. Uh, I mean, we're not going to even be remotely close to getting rid of misogyny and feminists have been actively organizing fighting against that for a lot longer than we have been even able to talk as a community as trans people so um it's an insurmountable problem and we can make it better but we're definitely not going to get rid of it and that can be very depressing to think like uh there is always going to be people in the world who want to like hurt me for no reason but i i kind of i think i'm free of that because what is looming over my head is the real material stuff. Like, if the government changes the law and takes away my passport, that will ruin my life. Like, uh, that was a really would fundamentally affect me. Um, but if some fucking bell end in the USA thinks that I'm a man, like, who gives a shit? Like, yeah. oh, honestly, genuinely doesn't affect me at all. And, um, you know, it. I, I the way I get got to that headspace is I reminded myself that. There are people who hate me for so many... Like, there are people, probably millions of people, who think I should die for being an atheist. Like, that's a, a real thing that people think. People want atheists <laughs> stoned to death. And I have been an atheist for a long time. Um, I, I never really... I never think about those people. Like, they... they I, don't, I don't... Like, I would if I was traveling to, you know, some village in Saudi Arabia or something on my own. I'd be quite worried about a number of things. Um, but I, their opinion is stupid, like utterly worthless to me. There are people who don't think women should be allowed to drive, like fucking stupid. Like e even if everyone thought that women shouldn't be allowed to drive, it'd be a stupid opinion. Um, uh, you know, if even if everyone thought atheists should die and I was the only atheist uh, and I had to act that I wasn't, I would still, I'd still be like, yeah, well, I'm right, aren't I? Like. <laughs> It's it's the it's the rational position. So when it's just the same. Like sure, there are loads of people who hate trans people, and in the UK there are a lot more people who hate trans people than there are who hate atheists or women who can drive. But still, like, so what? It's just a, a it's just numbers. Like it's not that doesn't change their position. It's still a stupid position. And uh, like the first step to feeling that is to believe, like, rationally convince yourself of it because it's true. And then once you think about it enough, that's it's just what I feel like. I, 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 I know that people can say, oh, I don't even care. And you can tell they obviously care. Like, genuinely, like, there are things that upset me in the trans wars. Um, and I do talk about them. Um, but this isn't one. Like, genuinely don't care at all. Yeah, I, I, so you yeah. Free. yeah, I'm right there with you. I don't think there is, like, you're asking, like, you know, is there any hope until we basically, like, eradicate this, these bad ideas? And I... I I think there's lots yeah. of hope. I am totally, 
I, I have said so many times on the show, I genuinely don't care what any individual thinks about my, like, whether or not I'm a woman. Like, obviously, my friends and, and my partner and my family have to accept me or they're not, I'm not going to, like, have you in my life or whatever. But, like, if some dude wants to say I'm a man, I, I genuinely don't care. Go on and thinking that that's fine. I care about whether or not your belief that I'm a man impacts my ability to operate in the world. Just like why, and you know, kind of this is what you were touching on, Katie, with atheist activism. There's a lot of atheists, even atheists here, who would consider themselves like anti-theists to some extent, right? And sometimes there's this conflation that when someone's an anti-theist, they would like vote for a law that would make being religious illegal or something. And like, that's stupid. I probably am some somewhat of an anti-theist or whatever, but I, I don't want to like eradicate religious people. Like, I, I all I want to do is like convince people of like the rational skeptical position hopefully through like reasoning and argumentation but like not everyone goes that you know is compelled by those kind of arguments or whatever but yeah uh, you know, I know I to, Arden <laughs> Arden do you mind if I jump in real quick ma'am miss do you go by ma'am and miss Arden I, I don't want to presume <laughs> I I'm not I'm a crazy trying, big I'm fan of titles be... in general but it's fine go on what did you want to ask you can call her sir, captain sir. captain's good I like captain captain empress he is the captain yeah queen of the universe <laughs> there you go queen my leash <laughs> <laughs> um you know but that that begs the question like and that now because of the humor I'm like forgetting where I'm going but I'll, I'll catch it back sorry well like <laughs> that begs the, that begs the no 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 problem no problem I got it. I got it. It's back. So, uh, but that begs the question, like, um, and Arden, no, Ar Arden, you said that uh, Katie might be an anti-theist. Katie, are you an anti-theist? Oh. Would you like to see religion eradicated? Yeah, that's a good question, actually. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't necessarily mean Katie's an anti-theist. I consider myself one. I know for a fact that Matt is one. I, I can't speak for every other would you, person. Oh, online. that's what I meant. I meant to say, I meant to say Arden. Are you so? You, would you like to see? But you said I thought you said you wouldn't necessarily like to see religious people eradicated. But no, yeah, I, what I, did you say? It's a big difference. Probably, <laughs> I like. So it, this is a weird question. Eradicated. I I use that word because it's loaded, and when it's put back on me, I'm like, well, hold on, that's loaded. Uh, here's the thing with the word eradicated, <laughs> right? Like, I think society would be better off without religion and without beliefs in the supernatural. I think all people would be better off without that. Eradicated is this sort of carries this connotation of like so wiping them out, like taking an action yeah. to get rid of them. And that's not really my like goal or my position. I, I do want there to be a society where people are informing their beliefs based on the evidence and the skepticism. But I, I don't know that I'm like trying to like force religious people out of beliefs. I want to convince them that their beliefs are unjustified and that they should also be atheists or humanists or whatever, you know, it takes are you, to... Are you two... Yeah. I'm sure you two are familiar with uh, with Dark Matter 2525, yes? Yeah. And that yeah. series of animation tales? Yeah. Yeah. So uh, are you... I don't know if you two caught the be the beginning. I'm not sure when they told this part of the tale. But in, in the beginning, if you, if you followed in chronological order, the guy who plays the young boy who plays the older God in that, in those series or in that series uh, actually started out in high school and he, his name was Yahweh. And so like, they're like, okay, today's a day in high school where you do your final exam and we put you in a virtual reality simulation where you, you'll forget all your memories and you'll become God. You create your own world, blah, 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 blah. And then we grade you and then we designate your role in society. So, He's done a pretty shit job. To like, I, yeah, that's, that's basically it. So, I, the reason I would like to see all religion eradicated and sent to not only religious uh, religion eradicated, okay, eradicated, but also re religious sentiment belief. Is, and I think it even dangerous to keep the book and tales around. Because as you know, yeah, and this Pandora is where it crosses the line for me. Yeah, me as well. I, 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 I think that um, it's the, well. If listen, we taught everyone, to why though? Okay. Hold on, Go on. I, I am going someplace with this. I do have a good reason. 
We can't okay. necessarily, we shouldn't, I'm not saying we should necessarily teach everyone not to believe, because that creates some sort of Stalinistic type government that would not be good for anyone. However, I, I believe that, like, when Pandora opened her box and the last thing to come out was hope, yet hope was the most evil thing to come out, I think religion offers the worst forms of hope imaginable. And it's all, it's religion only offers a far too beautiful sentiment. And I, then when you find out it's not true, it's I don't yeah, see how that's an okay, argument his, for his, getting, yeah, sorry, go on, Katie. Yeah. Go for it. Uh, here's my counter argument to getting rid of religious texts. Like, I think learning about the Greek gods and the Viking gods is quite cool. And <laughs> no one believes in them. And they, like, there are people who believe bullshit religious things, but no one is doing anything in the name of Zeus. And if we had destroyed her, this text, that, well, okay. There are some polytheists. Nearly no <laughs> <laughs> that are Very even few a, people yeah. sure. are sacrificing people in the name of Quetzalcoatl uh, these days or whatever. Um, so. And it's not I, even like. I, yeah, I don't know. Sorry. Justified. I was going to say, it's not even like you can also say, like, the bad ideas in the Bible justify it being eliminated because there are bad ideas associated with all of the polytheistic traditions like there's definitely sexism and like slavery and racism mm. in those you know maybe not in our current conceptualizations but they all sort of have those elements and they were still worth learning about in some extent um I i'm fine with the notion that religion's a part of our history and maybe even a crucial part of our evolutionary history and i think that's good to know mm. and to understand about humans but and I, I again, think, and I would advocate can... for us c trying to convince people, but I don't think I would be okay with like a law that bans the Bible or something, right? Like I think no, that I'd would be right. hard to get and authoritarian. Hard to get I don't think I think that yeah, I think that would be pushing it too far. But the question I would like to po pose to the both of you now is this: Do you think we can ever harness or engineer a society so advanced? in their knowledge that perhaps we work around religious tradition and belief to get to the point where no one believes in the lore and the myths that religion would purport, but whoever can draw from the text the best and greatest moral traditions and ethics I, and philosophy. I think, here's my hot take that probably isn't really supported by any evidence, but what my belief is, my blind faith belief is that we will never get rid of religion as humans without genetic engineering. Yeah. But with genetic engineering, it might be possible. Uh, that doesn't mean it's moral. I think the However, problem... I'd love to have the argument about whether it's moral or not. <laughs> yeah, we're going to have to wrap up this call because we're also now talking about atheism. And while I like talking about atheism, it isn't the topic of the show. But I, the, yeah. the only thing I have to say is kind of adding on to that, I think that humans are just prone to bad thinking the, the way stupid as one shit of, mate <laughs> one of the ways that we survive is by using something called a heuristic which is basically a mental shortcut and religion like survives almost entirely on the human tendency to take mental shortcuts and to make assumptions based on patterns mm -hmm. rather than to actually follow the evidence so i don't so think that we're ever going to fully eliminate religion or bad thinking or supernatural ideas but I do think that we are already progressing towards a society where the majority of people aren't participating in organized religion, and most people accept experts and scientific consensus. Well, I don't know if that's actually true that most people do that. I think it seems to me to be the case that most people generally trust science and the experts, and I, liked, I would like to think that that trend will continue on a positive direction, but yeah, I don't think we could ever get rid of religion. If, anyway, Safina, if, we do have to move on, because we yeah. are... Yeah. Well yeah, over thanks, time, and this thanks, is atheism. And we've got another caller yep. who's going to be interesting. So, thanks, great. Athena. Thanks a lot. Bye. Bye. I just want to end on the quote If God did not exist, it would be necessary to invent him. Because okay. I feel like that's what a lot of people would do. I think, I think if you, like, because you could get rid of, like, theoretically, you could get rid of all religions that we have today by just creating a group of people who were completely cut off from society like you could you could breed like a hundred babies or whatever and make robots to bring them up and put them on an island and they wouldn't have any contact with religion but they'll just make their own religion like yeah i, I think that's, oh for that's, sure that's just what humans do anyway yeah i'd love to i 
I, I think I should shoulder my way back into some of the atheist calls on this uh, atheist shows on this channel because um, if you run any at a sensible time for me, I, I want to yeah. get back in because I we do uh, I'm our Sunday like shows are at two p.m. here, so that's the yeah. same time as this show for you. It used to be it used to start at three a.m. my time. Anyway, I'll talk to you afterwards. Let's yes. talk to Felicia, Felicia in New Hampshire, maybe. Yes, New Hampshire. <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah. Okay. I'm from hey. Old Hampshire. That's my original place. Um, you want oh. to talk about Genspect? Uh, yes. Yeah, so I got a uh, I got an email from my uh, Democratic representative, and it's same email went to uh, a couple of uh, Democratic uh, representatives' uh, email lists. And there's a thing called Genspec, which I'd never heard of before. Um, and they, they announced that they released the first draft of the gender framework. Um, and their aim is apparently to replace WPATH standards of treatments. And um, yeah. it's essentially, I mean, digging into it, it's, it's another one of Stella O'Malley's um, conversion therapy things uh, that she's trying to yeah. push. And, um, you know, it, what has me more concerned is that this was going out not to, you know, Republicans or, or anything like that. It was going out to, um, it was going out to, you know, Democrats um, and being advertised as, you know, um, how WPATH is, um, uh, you know, essentially bad and supports extremely flawed, quote, child-led standards, unquote. And I'm wondering, besides contacting my representative, what, what other steps can I take to, to help combat something, you know, this, this, this disingenuous? Um, yeah, so I guess I'll just start by saying, for anyone who doesn't know, Genspect are like a gender critical, uh, I mean, it's a hate group. Their goal is to create a world without trans people. Like, absolutely. It, they, there's quite a lot of the people involved with it have said things like, like Stella O'Malley says that her goal is to, that no one would have to transition and she wants to target 100 percent desistant rate desistance rates i don't know because she's irish about how safe i am to say something like whether she is a conversion therapist or not um legally mm. so i'm not going to but um i certainly wouldn't feel safe with my children uh doing anything that she believes in um i guess is maybe the best way i could say it but maybe Arden could say what she thinks if, you, well, if she knows about her. Listen, I, so I've heard of Genspect. I'm not familiar with all their uh, their whole deal. But as a freedom-loving American, I, I'm happy to say that she's a conversion therapy-loving, bigoted fucker or something. If that, if that makes everyone happy, that I can say that. I couldn't I, I possibly comment. That. Well, maybe I could comment and I should find out about the laws for Ireland and uh, the UK. But anyway, what I was, the, the thing is... it. Genspect is total garbage, and yeah, they w they want to replace WPATH. Uh, for anyone who doesn't know, WPATH is like the international body of experts on trans healthcare who gives out the guidelines for all of the major uh, health organisations. It's made up of members of the major health, mm. pardon me, major health organisations, and they they I mean, WPATH themselves are quite controversial. There are a lot of trans people who don't like them because they think it's like uh, cis heteronormative and uh, encourages gatekeeping and all this kind of stuff, but I mean, compared to Genspect, at least WPATH think that trans people should and do exist, and that we should get the best healthcare available, and that science is important, and that we should, you know, follow the evidence. Genspect just straight up do not want trans people to exist, and they'll just do anything they can in order to achieve that. Um, they are trying to position themselves like a lot of gender critical groups, and this is something that the British pioneered, I feel, um, gender critical groups try and position themselves as sensible, reasonable, like, we, they don't say harsh words. Their, their members and founders might say things in podcasts like, we should target a 100% desistance rate. But what that really means isn't necessarily clear to someone who doesn't know what's going on, and the organisation themselves would never say such a thing, even though if that is exactly what they want to do. Um, and Genspect is trying to do the same thing, but I just don't... They, I'm not so worried about them. Like, I'm worried about them, like, what, what's more dangerous is if people who are Genspect-y people uh, were to try and force themselves into already existing organizations. Like, Genspect themselves, everyone who's, everyone who's heard of them, who knows who they are, knows who they are. Like... Mm -hmm. You're either a trans person who's heard of them and you know that bullshit, or you're a gender critical who's heard of them and you suddenly like the one trans healthcare organization uh, 
Genspec. Like everyone knows. And I don't think it's very difficult to find out about them. It is worthwhile telling people like if it's if your representative is a random cis person who you think might be receptive to listening but they don't know anything about Genspec, absolutely just do some research on who they are, get some quotes and some positions of some of their founders and stuff and just say this group is a scam. Like it's a load of bullshit. Um, they hate trans people. Yeah. So, so that is worthwhile. But I, I'm not so worried about them. What I think is maybe more important is when they, you know, they have they have some body somewhere that's like, oh, that they, they have a representative of some medical organizations, and they like, you know, they run the New Hampshire district hospital intake, something organization or whatever, and then they get voted on to this position because they are someone or other with connections or whatever. And they're a gender critical activist who worked with Genspec. That is the kind of thing which is um, more dangerous because then they're in a position of power in a, up until this point, worthwhile organization. And so when they say stuff, they can, they can like, you know, grime a worm tongue it a little bit and they can just murky the waters a bit and push back on things that otherwise would have passed if everyone there was rational and stuff. Um, so maybe that's something worthwhile. I, I know there are lots of people tracking these kind of things, so I'm not going to say, Felicia, you should personally track the district of whatever you live in or anything. Um, but I guess, you know, if you want to do more than just write a letter, you should find out your local groups. There will be a a group, you know, a trans rights group, either in your city or in your county or, or at least in your state and get on their mailing list, find out what campaigns they're running, see if you can get involved with them. You know, even if you can just offer a few hours of your week to supporting them, that can make a big difference. Um, but yeah, I I find, you know, I, I do a lot of shouting about this bullshit and I find that the best thing to do is tell people who might not know one time with evidence and be ready for follow-up questions in a discussion and beyond that what can you do like if, if they if if it's like the politician and they happen to be like your partner's cousin or something and you've got some kind of connection you can get in and talk to them spend <laughs> hundreds of hours on them absolutely yeah you know waste your time but otherwise you could spend hours and hours writing a letter to your representative and then they could be just gender critical or someone who doesn't give a shit or whatever and then you spent hours of your life for what you know um i don't know that was a really rambly answer Arden, what do you think <laughs> there's not much i have to add i do think there's a certain element of you know don't burden yourself with thinking that you have the sole responsibility to undermine their like uh, uh, encroachment uh, in your area or your state or whatever. But I mean, there's always like, I, you know, the things that everyone always tells you to do, if you can like testify at a hearing for a bill, that's always a good thing you can do. Calling your representative, that's a good thing you can do. Like phone banking or, or uh, canvassing for like politicians and having the good information. So like Katie said, if people ask questions, you like have that on hand. But I, yeah, I do caution against feeling um, the notion of feeling like you have to do something or feeling responsible. Like, oh, wait, obviously we are here because we also feel responsible in some way to counteract the bigotry, right? But like, uh, yeah, I mean, like if you don't have like a, a platform and you aren't like an active activist, like attending events and things, I, I think you should just maybe try to inform people who you think it might apply to and then, you know, hope for the best. Okay. Yeah, I just wanted to call in and find out because I had actually never heard of them until my own Democratic representative sent me an email about them and it was like, well, that's odd. <laughs> I wasn't quite sure why you're supporting that. So, um, yeah, no, thank you uh, so much. I appreciate it. Yeah, definitely call it, that representative because holy shit, yeah. if it's a Democrat, that's stupid. But also, you're a New Hampshire and I feel like all the Democrats in New Hampshire are like total libs, so... Well, you know, it's it's not just New Hampshire, though. The Democrats in, in New Jersey and I believe... South Dakota also got similar emails, so that's kind of why I was a little bit worried. I, I sort of raised an alarm there. It was a little um, odd. Yeah, I 
I, I, it's definitely, I think, perhaps uh, just uh, an artifact of like the culture in New Hampshire. Grew up in Vermont, spent a lot of time in New Hampshire as a kid. And uh, the whole, uh, what your motto is the like, live free or die, right? The <laughs> let me drive my motorcycle without a helmet because I'm an American kind of mindset. Like, I, it doesn't surprise me that the Democrats who would get targeted by an organization like that are in a state like New Hampshire. But yeah, I mean, I think even a lot of those people generally speaking, when you present them with facts, have a hard time not modifying their position to some degree. So yeah, I think, you know, trying to be just doing the things we talked about, calling your at, calling your representative, uh, maybe phone banking or canvassing for a slightly more left-leaning candidate could be really positive. But other than that, I'm just, I hope you live in one of the good parts of New Hampshire. There's a lot of really awesome parts of New Hampshire, but there's a lot of really terrible parts of New Hampshire as well. Oh, I'm, uh, I'm, I am deep in MAGA country, so it's, oh. uh, it's been an interesting experience. <laughs> I am so sorry. At least you have, uh, in southern New Hampshire, you have one of the biggest and most well-known reptile breeding facilities in the entire of the U.S. <laughs> you should go check out Nerd. I forget what their, their shop is called. It has a different name, but New England Reptile Distributors, they're... Some of the best people, like, leading the industry. Sorry. Anyway, you're not a reptile person. I'm just a nerd, and I want to go visit that facility so bad, and I haven't been to New Hampshire in, like, eight years. So, anyway, thank you, Felicia. (laughs) Thanks so much. I appreciate it. Have a great night. You as well. Bye. Bye. All righty. After the completely unnecessary detour into reptile talk. Well, when you as soon as you got out a lizard fact for New Hampshire, I was like, I have no facts for New Hampshire. <laughs> so I just quickly Googled New Hampshire metal bands and uh, it came up with none, basically. But one called Trapped, which is a really shit new metal band from like 2004 or something. Hmm. Uh, and they had one song called Headstrong, which is really bad because all new metal is bad, objectively bad. Um, like a truth of the universe is like, Two plus two is four, and new metal is terrible, and Trapped <laughs> is one of those. But also, the singer of Trapped, um, can't remember what his name is, used to have a Twitter account. Maybe he does again. He's probably got, actually, he's probably got a Twitter account again now. He's blatantly an Elon Musk fanboy. He's a bellend. He, I wish I still had the screenshot for this. So if anyone watching has this, please, I want this. The singer from Trapped said some weird your dad comment to me once because. He's like an anti-feminist, and I said something like, what are you talking about, mate? You're an idiot. And then he was like, yeah, that's what my, your dad said, or something. I was like, what? Okay. <laughs> and then he got suspended. It's like <laughs> a your mom joke, but worse, I guess? I don't yeah, know. Yeah, I think he was, I feel like he was trying to do your mum and also your dad doesn't love you, and it just came out wrong. And it was a really bad dunk, so I screenshotted it and like tweeted it. And then <laughs> it created like a pylon, and on of him and then it kind of snowballed into something else because he started arguing back and saying other dumb stuff and then he got suspended from it so that's, that's, that's my new there's my connection to new hampshire <laughs> also i like how somebody called me out for having a new england accent they said uh they spelt it n apostrophe a m p s h u h new hampshire i don't know i guess i guess i must have said it off the cuff more more new england like so there you go yeah, if you're really from hampshire you don't say the h right <laughs> I, I think Hampshire. we we definitely say the H in America, but uh, Hampshire, <laughs> Hampshire, New Hampshire, New Hampshire. I guess it is Birmingham. kind of a na- New Hampshire. Yeah, I guess I do kind of do that a little bit. Anyway, Hampshire. we have super chats. If you guys don't know, on the show we read out super chats at the end of our call in portion. That is any super Should chat of five dollars or more, we will read out live on air, and we are diving into that right now. We've got five dollars from Pibble Punk. Half dog, half canine. Uh, what? Uh, one week before my first clinic appointment and day three of quitting nicotine. Wish me luck. Oh, yeah. Good luck. Definitely. Oh, well done. Quitting nicotine can be difficult, so good for you. Nicotine's bad for dogs. Five pounds from Sean Ishwood. Each element of a finite field is the sum of two squares. Each element of a finite... I don't know enough about what constitutes an element. Uh, Sean, you would have to tell me more. Well, Thank I you, quite though. like Sean. I have to say, I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> I, I care. <laughs> I'm sorry. I just, I can't do math. I'm like, 
all over my head. Five dollars from William Mattis. Mats, mates. Uh, I have a friend scary. who's into trans medical stuff and seems super phobic. What is trans medical exactly? She herself is trans, by the way. Yeah. So I've mentioned before that I used That's to be a trans medicalist <laughs> on this show. Trans medicalism is basically the position that the valid trans identities are those who have like a diagnosed condition of gender dysphoria. Uh, a lot of the trans medicalist people will also fall into the sex binary kind of thing where they're like the, you know, you're only really trans if you are a trans woman or a trans man. Non-binary people aren't real. Um, it's basically an attempt by a minority group to curry favor with their oppressors because they're afraid of losing their rights. And that's really about as deep as it goes. Uh, I think for me, one of the things that was really helpful was the notion that like how I might feel about somebody else's trans experience doesn't really matter because at the end of the day, I don't have access to their mind to know whether or not they are a real trans person or not. And I don't think that me or the law should be able to decide on someone's behalf that they are not a valid trans person. Um, and that kind of was the line of thinking that helped me sort of unravel some of those beliefs personally. But yeah, I just yeah. think it's just inherently inconsistent. Like we, we can delve in. I'd love to delve in. If some trans medicalists want to call in, I know there's one uh, trans medicalist lady who seems to quote tweet basically everything I do and says <laughs> some, <laughs> calls me like a murderer or something. And then I'm like, justify your position. And then she never does. And they're fun people to argue with is because you they're often more conservative as well i i find like generally yeah. and they often have very i think as a defense mechanism have very certain beliefs and they are the most fun people to argue with because they walk into exposing internal contradictions the fastest and i just love it when people come in with these hot strong beliefs and then you're like so you also believe this. And so that concludes to this, yes? And they're like, yeah. And like, cool, that's a logical contradiction of your original premise. And then like explode and it's amazing. But I, you know, we can have longer calls about this. Please do call in. But I think this just message just sums it up perfectly. Like, I know a trans person who says they're trans medical, but they seem transphobic. Yeah, that's what it is. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's a trans person who is transphobic. <laughs> it's also obnoxious because a lot of the arguments that are used to like validate and justify and defend the existence of gender identity and trans the trans people's right to access healthcare and things are arguments you kind of have to deny to take those positions. Um, which kind of gets into where you get some of those logical contradictions. contradictions. Yeah. Yeah. But thank you, William. For your super chat. Oh, another Sean one. Every other one is going to be a Sean one. Five pounds for Sean Ishwood. The Prime Minister said he has utmost respect for Brianna Jay's mother. No, he doesn't. He is a lying piece of shit. But apparently he has not enough for Brianna to apologise for his comment. Yeah, he won't apologise for his comment because he wants votes and he's courting the most vile people in the country to vote for him. Right. And he has no spine at all and he is uh, even more of a... He doesn't care about this stuff at all. Like, at least Liz Truss was a true believer. Liz Truss was prepared to destroy the UK economy and her own reputation for her stupid beliefs. Liz Truss genuinely hates trans people. Rishi Sunak doesn't care. If he was Prime Minister mm. in 100 years' time, he'd be pro-trans rights. Like, doesn't give a shit. He's just an idiot. Yeah, that's anyway. Uh 20 Next. pounds from Jackie Greenland. As soon as I saw PMQs yesterday, I told my wife that story wasn't going to go away quickly. We can dream that it marks a turning point in the discourse. I think Katie deserves a hashtag team Katie this week. Sorry, Arden. Katie, you're shaking Thanks, your Jackie. head now. Uh, I mean, yeah, I do deserve the hashtag, but no, I, I, it's not going away quickly, but I don't think it's going to mark a turning point. I, I guess it's one of those things that maybe could be like a footnote in a Wikipedia article. <laughs> That's uh -huh. how big a deal it is. <laughs> um, but like, it's not even the worst thing Rishi Sunak said. I, it's just politically relevant, and the media has seen it as a scoop. That's that's it. I, yeah. Um, Five dollars from Breadbox of Doom. That's uh, an interesting concept. <laughs> 
Two years ago, as of yesterday, I came out for the first time. This show has been an absolute lifesaver for me. Thanks for everything. Hashtag Team Arden. Oh, congratulations, Breadbox of Doom. Yeah, awesome. That's so good. Two years ago. I can't believe the show is almost three years old. That feels impossible. I know. But it's coming up. $5 from Melissa. U.S. driver's licenses have self-reported weight. Most people I know are not accurate in their reporting. Sometimes tens kilograms. Hashtag team metric. Yeah, I mean, there's also to consider that, like, your weight is going to fluctuate within, like, 10 to 15 pounds on the average. So I think nobody's looking at your license and being like, well, this can't be them because their ID says 110 pounds and they're 115 pounds. Like, obviously, I think people just kind of consider that. But yeah, definitely weight and height. Or no, not weight. No. Well, you're saying there is self-reported weight. I don't even remember. I have an ID in here somewhere. I probably could tell you what's fucking on it, but that's over there in the corner. So what's interesting here. is someone might say, oh, but weight is objective. And that's true in the sense that we we can come up with a tool and we can measure someone's weight. However, whatever you write on the license is instantly wrong because to a certain level of precision, your weight changes literally all the time. Like yeah. even if you eat the same diet, it changes throughout the day. And like, yeah, it doesn't really matter whether someone is like 100 kilograms or 99.8 kilograms. But it doesn't actually matter if they're 100 or 90, or it doesn't actually matter at all for the driving license, however they are at all. But what the point is, is like, people often imagine that there are objective properties that people have. And and mm. that's like a premise they have, and they frame their whole like worldview around it. And I think the caller earlier was guilty of doing that, at least to some degree, even though like, I like that they mentioned about prescriptive and descriptive definitions, but then I feel like they went off the rails on a bit on still believing that there was this objective definition of male and female. But it's the same of like, I, I don't know, maybe I've just watched too many vis videos on particle physics recently, but like, there is an objective way at a human scale. Like, I can make a device and you can stand on it and it can give me a number and it's going to give me this pretty much the same number next time you step on it in two minutes time. Um, but like your objective weight, like, so what's that? That's the, uh, force you feel from gravity on your combined, like what atoms and like you don't even have a hard boundary to where you are because where do you stop and finish it? Like you're, you're a solid mostly, but then atoms just come off from you all the time and other ones like join to you and like it's just it's not a real thing like you don't have like to a, a a particle scale you don't have an objective weight like if you keep zooming down you end up getting to um plank uh uncertainty this is not a thing it just doesn't exist it, it only does at human scales so, i'm not a anyway. solid by the way i'm a noble <laughs> gas actually that's why i got the your majesty title <laughs> <laughs> Fifty dollars from Big Black oh, wow, Corvette. That yeah. is that's a very fun donation. That's a funny username. Very cool. <laughs> oh, everyone is a short sure one. Amazing. <laughs> Five pounds from Sean Ishwood. Even in maths, there are undefined terms, primitive notions like point in geometry. Rely on intuition to motivate them. Uh, that's interesting. I uh, I think philosophy of maths is really interesting. Actually, I. Um, I think I've said on this show before, but when I was at university, I snuck into the philosophy of math lectures. I feel that's one of the nerdiest things I've ever done. <laughs> no, we've talked about this. We're both diametrically opposed on philosophy because, like, I can't stand the... I I love, like, logical syllogisms, but when the logical syllogism is, like, if A, then B, therefore Q, I hate that. When it's applied to, like, actual concepts and words, I'm totally down, I can follow, and I enjoy, and I, I thrive abstract, in that environment, yeah. but the abstract is fucking awful oh, I, for me. I would just have all my arguments in abstract if I could. It'd be amazing. Um, nice. Interestingly, just on this geometry thing, um, the idea of a coordinate system with, like, an origin and then, like, numbers that go off infinitely, like, you know, when you, if you were thinking about your position in space, you might say, like, here is zero, and then if I take one step to the right, I'm, like, one meter east of this, or, or whatever. And, and if you were, say, designing a computer game, you would have to come up with a zero position, and then you could 
put your characters in relation to this zero position and effectively give them any unlimited values for these coordinates. That whole idea is new in like maths, as in it's only hundreds of years old. Um, and that isn't the way that people thought about the world at all. And it's relevant in physics um, because lots of people imagine look, when, and this is, this comes into an atheism thing. This is why I want to get back on the atheism channel because like when people often say like, oh, the universe came from nothing. What is it expanding into? Like the own people, the reason people conceptualize it like that is because they imagine that there is this coordinate system that just exists and the universe is just on it. And maybe we don't know where the center is, but then mu it must exist in the coordinate system. But that isn't necessarily how space works at all. And perhaps all points are only in relation to each other and there isn't a, it isn't possible to create a global coordinate system. Anyway, quick move on to the next one. Yeah, no, that, that's interesting. <laughs> I don't understand physics, it's but- Historically relevant. $5 from Storm Chaser Noah. Florida needs to make like the soap dispenser and wash their hands of DeSantis. True. <laughs> I uh, actually, my mom got me a shirt for Christmas that uh, says "Don't say DeSantis" instead of like the "Don't say gay" bill, uh, which is funny. I think what they should do is, um, wasn't there that thing a while ago? Oh yeah, yeah, here we go. So you know there was that guy running. Was it Florida? Rick Santorum? Where's he from? <sighs> I'm not sure. Florida sounds right, but I know who you're talking uh, about. Uh, oh, uh, Virginia, maybe? Oh. I don't know. Anyway, anyway, anyway. Um, there was... So the reason I'm bringing this up is because you just done a, like a sanitary DeSantis pun. Uh, there was some like competition to um, come up with the definition of Santorum. And the definition that won was a frothy mixture of lubricant and fecal matter as occasional byproduct of anal sex. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. And people have just d doubled and tripled down on this definition, and it's actually, like, in the dictionary now. Um, That's and it's because so it's the surname of former U.S. Senator Rick Sanatorum um, after he made a com a statements comparing homosexuality to bestiality. So people just thought of the most disgusting thing that they could, <laughs> vaguely relevant to what he was saying, to just insult him. And now it's in the dictionary. So we should just do that with all of them. Beautiful. Like, I don't know what a DeSantis is. Let's let's come up with a new definition for it. Some other cum related. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> people are saying also it's Pennsylvania. He was the senator of Pennsylvania. Okay, okay. Uh, that makes sense. Um, yeah, I mean, it's down, amazing. Just do it to all of them. Associate everyone's name with... Oh, wait, sorry. I sent the last one and we didn't read it. Um, yeah, I'm down with doing that to everyone's name. Okay, 4 99 from Louise, Ri Bleh, Louise Richardson. Team Arden this week, I have visible characteristics. Hey. Yeah, but which ones, Louise? <laughs> which ones do you... Ex well, no, gonna, I was going to I was gonna reference, but I don't think I can say that to an actual person. <laughs> it's going to be... Never mind. <laughs> What percentage of your cells have a sufficient mucosal lining? Five pounds <laughs> from Leah. Hey, I'm a 22-year-old trans woman hoping to finish coming out and start HRT soon. I was wondering for any advice slash words of encouragement you can give. Definitely, like, just go for it. If you feel like you're confident in what you want, give it a shot. And you can always stop and make changes later if things don't feel quite right. But really, all the evidence is on your side. HRT is going to be good for you. And I wish you the best of luck. Go on YouTube and type in Just Do It Hardcore Remix and then listen to the top song. And that's my advice. <laughs> <laughs> I think you should call in. This would be a great uh, topic for calling. Um, but yeah, go slow. It's not a race. You don't need to rush um, and experiment and explore. Yeah, actually, as Ben pointed out in an episode a couple months ago, slower changes are actually shown to have better long-term results. More trip People are generally more satisfied with their long-term results when things are gradual. Uh, $5 from Adrian Morgan. Another distinction between Lee's initial question is that a God claim is external, while a gender statement is internal and a matter of identity. 
Yeah, I mean, like, I, I get what he wants to get this... at. Um, <laughs> sorry, yeah, you're about to... I didn't mean to cut you off. No, you're good. Oh, this this is um, something that another route that I was going to take, and that's why I kind of stumbled at the start because I didn't know which of the two to go for. But people do all this like, oh, I don't know if I can accept you're really trans or not. Or, uh, but like, if someone says I'm gay or I'm bisexual or I'm straight, you just accept it, don't you? Right. And that it... that's an internal identity claim, and it's actually one we can make predictions on uh, about you know whether someone's going to be happy in their sex life and all this kind of stuff um, based on their partner, but it is also just a claim you just accept about someone which we don't have an objective measure for. Uh, so th I think that, you know, it's very easy to say someone has made a claim and I can't measure it, therefore it sounds like religion. Um, but I think that's kind of a dumb way of looking at it because there are loads of claims about people that you know are true. Like, I have a headache. It's a claim that sometimes people lie about. It is possible to lie about having a headache, but like you can or never measure any other mental a state. Literally, yeah, yeah, yeah. any mental state is self-report. But also some physical pain. Like there is physical. Like when I had, I I once had debilitating RSI or RMI as it's called, and I couldn't do anything. I like I literally couldn't even hold a pen. I couldn't I couldn't hold a cup. I had to drink like this, like with two hands. Uh, uh, they didn't really know what was wrong with me and it took loads of physiotherapy to fix it. But um, yeah, that, that was just like, I just, they just had to accept my report of pain. Like, and it was physical pain. It wasn't mental pain. <laughs> so, um, I mean, I guess all pain is mental pain. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. Anyway, part two. Part two is also trans folks aren't claiming to be the exact same as cis people. When I say I'm a man, I'm not saying I'm identical to a cis man, but I'm still a man. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. This kind of also gets into, you know, where he was talking about, like, are you ontologically a woman? Which I, I've i thought of it that way in my own brain, bad. but I've never actually heard someone say that bit out loud. So that was really entertaining for that to actually be said out loud. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. I feel like Lee had a lot of the setup to come to a sensible conclusion and then just stood off from it at the end. Like, you're like, okay, yeah, just all definitions are uh, descriptive not prescriptive like yeah oh yeah okay there's a difference between like the ontological claim and it's like oh no we're talking about phenotypes like this is it this is the setup and then it's like yeah but <laughs> i think like, that was, no I say, your premise is true <laughs> i think it was a great example though of what we've talked about many times which is that shift you know the pushing back of the goalposts and like the when you point out like oh well actually this part of your definition doesn't work it's like oh well that's because the real definition is back here behind this curtain and it's this thing and you're like well that's a problem and they're like haha that's because i knew you were gonna do this too and there's <laughs> another curtain behind that one and it's like it just keeps going and yeah it, it's frustrating but i and do then we end up with vaginal back. mucus right the last curtain the <laughs> whole time was vaginal mucus i i will say that's the first time i've ever heard the argument argumentum <laughs> mucosum <laughs> Well, that's because you're a noob. Because I have, I have had multiple hour-long arguments about this before. So, oh my god, I'm, I'm prepared. <laughs> you take this one. Oh uh, yes, five dollars from Monkey, a typewriter. Um, already put in this chat. Already put this in chat. But I'm pretty sure the medical term Katie was looking for is gushy. <laughs> Oh god, it's terrible. <laughs> Perfect timing on this comment, by the way. Yeah. Much love from a cis bro comrade, Team Snack Mummy. Thank you. Uh, Alright, we've got five pounds from Jack Cavi. Kids are safer at a Lost Profits show than they are around gender critical. There, I said it. Hashtag Team oh. I don't know what Lost Profits yeah, is. So uh, Lost Profits were a emo band from, uh, yeah, careful googling it, emo band from like 2001, and the singer is uh, uh, in prison for CSA or whatever. Yeah, you didn't it. need to tell me because a lot of the like emo bands had that problem, and I knew people. Oh, some of them. Growing up, well, sure, sure. I'm not saying majority, but I I knew of multiple instances. Two or three friends when i was growing up who were really into emo bands because i was in like the emo scene kind of 
a stunt yeah, of clown course you in high were. school. Look at you. <laughs> uh, and uh, a lot of them had met and spoken to the singers of a lot of these bands. I I had chemically straightened swoopy hair. I swear on my life. Um, and I remember thinking as a kid, I was like, you're talking to these people? That feels weird. Like, you're not, I don't think you're supposed to be talking to these people. I think that's wrong somehow. But as a kid, I didn't really know how to, like, articulate it. Um, yeah. Five dollars from Laser Lizard. Great name. All reptile detours are necessary. Hashtag team. Oh, that's okay. it. That's as far as I read, because that's the end of the hashtag. <laughs> so... Captain Arden Hart. I love, uh, I'm, I'm liking the new <laughs> names. Also, I just have to comment. So because of getting the skinks, I've gone on a new kick of being obsessed with every skink. And I pointed out before, Laser Lizard's profile picture is a red-eyed crocodile skink. Now I really want to get like a colony of red-eyed crocodile skinks because they're all so, so cute. There's so many great videos of like, the, the thing to get a lot of animals to like you is to hand feed them. And slowly, like, it took this one in this arid enclosure, the big one, like, a year and a half to start liking me. But finally now, when I come up with food, he's so excited to see me. And uh, I've seen so many great videos of crocodile skinks, like, busting out of their hide and swerving all over the enclosure to get to the front just to get a worm in their mouth. And it's so funny. It's it's adorable. They're cute. Do, do skinks make that noise like geckos where they're like, no, eh. So that's a toke gecko that you're talking about that makes that sound. Um, I think red-eyed crocodile skinks are actually one of the only other lizards that has vocalizations. And to to there's very, very few vocalized, and it's tokes and uh, red-eyed crocodile skinks and at least one or two others, I believe. Did I? I might have said this on the show before. I might. I can't even remember. But um, I actually met a man from Thailand uh, who was called Toke. Oh. Because okay. when he was born, he, he, there was the geckos doing that in the room where his mother was giving birth. Yeah. Uh, I just thought it was brilliant. It's such a good name. Toke. <laughs> They're uh, also, Toke they geckos they are known that. for being mega aggressive. There's some funny videos of them in the wild, like fighting snakes and shit. Cause they're, they have a really? huge bite force for such a small animal. They're really cool. <laughs> they have a huge bite force. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. Huge bite force. We've got $10 here from Khan Min Nguyen. Hopefully I did that right this time. Uh, do you think Grinder only allowing filter for trans people who want to find each other, but not for cis people, would drive cis gays and trans people further apart? Hashtag Team Katie for Twitter's rage on you. I <laughs> I don't exactly know what you're talking about. So you're saying Grinder is allowing filtering for trans people who want to find each other, and they're not doing that for cis people. I don't know how yeah. that would drive cis gays and trans people apart. Um, I don't well, know if I think... it would drive transphobic people apart because they would wind up transphobic people because they'll be like, so you're allowed our own thing, but we're not allowed our own thing. Um, you know, it's the classic, like, how white come that there are month. support Where's groups my for white black history yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, how come there's not an International Men's Day? There is an International Men's Day, but, you know, it's that kind of attitude. Um, sure. I, yeah, I mean, I I don't know. I'm I'm not, I'm not on Grinder, so I'm not really going to comment on the politics of it. <laughs> I, I've used Grinder in the past. I don't use any dating apps now, but I, yeah. I don't, I don't know. I don't really have strong feelings on it. It seems like a huge nothing issue to me. Um, I think if people are upset about that, I would ask them humbly to get some real fucking problems. <laughs> See, get get some real problems is such a good reply to people. <laughs> right. When they're just like, yeah, but what about trans women in Irish dancing competitions? It's like, <laughs> get a real problem. Like, you know, <laughs> yeah. I, I, I care more about, like, the cost of my water bill than I do about this. <laughs> I can get right. a life. <laughs> um, $5 from Rainbow Wolf. Uh, at Adrian... Uh, not to mention we have the scientific consensus on our side for trans identities. There is zero evidence for God. Um, I, think... I guess Adrian, someone in the chat. Oh, okay. uh, uh, I don't know. Yes, that is worth pointing out. I mean, true. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, that was kind of what I said initially to Lee was that, you know, we, I mean, you, you also made the case, but it was like, 
there's a lot of evidence that can lead you to to the conclusion that there exists some construct in the brain like gender identity. No such evidence exists for prayer or God. And even evidence to the contrary of their claims in some cases. Five dollars from the Ben B. Had my first therapy appointment earlier this week. Hopefully I can figure out what I am comfortable with, what I am and be comfortable with it. Thank you all for helping me get here. Yeah, good luck. I definitely, I actually just started with a new therapist at the beginning of this year. First time in therapy in like a year. And um, it is difficult getting used to a new therapist. But I, I quite like my therapist, uh, my new one. I hope yours works out for you and that she helps you figure out what you want to do and how you view yourself. Yeah. Five dollars from Bumblebree. That's a good name. Uh, okay, but Linkin Park slaps. Still it's feeling true. hashtag Team Katie. Love from the hive. It's true. <sighs> I know Katie hates I, Linkin no. Park, but it's true. I do. Yeah, I mean, no. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I don't actually know any of Linkin Park's stuff that came out in the last like ten years before he died, but like. All of the OG stuff that was like super emo that was in all like the anime music videos when I was like seven. That was, I lived for the anime music videos within the end. <laughs> I felt so dark. I was like, they capture my emotions. <laughs> <laughs> you were such an emo when you were a kid, weren't I, you? I was. I was. Uh, Four ninety nine from Lena. Hey guys, I got my FFS scheduled for October. Congratulations. Also doing weekly voice lessons. I watch every show on the line. Forrest is too cute. Forrest is awesome. Love the guy. Uh, but yeah, congrats on getting uh, your surgery scheduled. That's sometimes the hardest and scariest bit of it is getting everything in order to like get it scheduled and on the, la on the way. Um, you yeah, all know I've been having that issue with getting fucking bottom surgery scheduled. So... Good fun. Uh, fun. Next is... Five dollars from Calassia789. Hashtag Team Arden, just for balance. What? <laughs> balance? I, I think I've gotten pretty much all the votes today, except for maybe like one or two. Uh, thank you, Where's it being Michelle? Katie today? I think I've had two. Just... Thanks a lot, mate. <laughs> I'm just more lovable. Let's face the facts. I just feel sorry for you. <laughs> uh, $10 from Stephanie Helms. If my driver's license had an M, it would cause great confusion. Plus, it would not match my other identity documents. Hashtag Team Katie for Hampshire. Would love to revisit Hamble LaRice. I don't know what that is. <laughs> Me either. But yeah, I definitely <laughs> agree that uh, causing trans people to have a different marker on their license will, if anything, just create more confusion. Oh, Hamble is near Southampton. Southampton. Uh, Southampton is shit. <laughs> but I'm sure Hamble is a nice place. Uh, 4 99 from 7. I managed to change my gender marker on my driving license and it was much harder than it needed to be. On passport and social security, it's self-report as it should be. Yeah, it's just weird, isn't it? Like I'm not sure where you are, <clears throat> Seven, but I know the laws are just so different in every single state. There are states where it is mm. just self-report, where all I got to do is go back to the DMV, put a female on the application, and it's that. that's it. It's so easy. But then there are states like Texas where I had to have an affidavit from a judge and my doctor letters, and I had to have like a special form with my application. And then... Also, I don't know if it's because I'm so far into transition at the time of trying to get it that they thought I was maybe transitioning, like, I was like AFAB transitioning the other way. But after getting all that, initially, they sent me to the printing station with a paper that still had an M on it. And I had to go up to the woman and be like, I have fought really long and hard to get the this paper. Please make sure this has an F and not an M on it. That's what these documents are supposed to do. And she was like, oh, I'm so sorry that woman did that. Let's get this fixed. Um, yeah, the people at the facility were sweet. They're not the ones who made the laws, but it sucks. 
So on the UK driving license, it doesn't say M or F either. I don't can't remember if I said it did earlier, but I've just remembered it. It doesn't. It doesn't passport, which might be more thinking of. But it the information is included. Uh, but we have so it has like your date of birth and it has your address and your name, and then it has this like code on it where it's like the first five letters of your surname, and then like the first letter of all of your other names, and then like some of the random numbers from your birthday in a weird order and then something 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 and the way to tell whether someone is male or female from a driving license perspective is if their birth month is between 0 uh, 1 and 12 then it's male but they add 50 to the birth month of female driving licenses so, because I was born in March, my birth month is 53. That but seems... if you were born in December, it would be 62. So stupid. And the way less convenient. <laughs> I did just look up, the Texas driver's license doesn't have weight, but it does have your height, your sex, your eye color. It also has, like, any restrictions, which I think has to do with, like, I wear glasses. So I think there's, like, a special marker on there for, like, if you're a person who has vision restrictions or something like that. Um, okay. And the class. I mean, so, that like, one kind of makes If you are sense. like a uh, driving, like um, uh, uh, trucks, like big trucks. Yeah, um, we have that. We have that on the back. It's got a, a little picture of all the different things, it's like a motorbike picture and a van picture. Oh, interesting. Can... Get little graphics. It's the same as the Europe one. Um, Five dollars from uh, Alyssa. It's funny how GC people will say an is person. Intersex. Intersex person with symptoms is a man and then completely change the position when they learn the name of the condition i uh, yeah i mean they they say disgusting things about intersex people all the time one thing worth noting on the gender gender critical position on intersex people is even four years ago um i would say at, at lockdown time the official gender critical position held by the majority of the loudmouth gender criticals was that Casta semenya is a woman and at some point in 2023, they all flipped. And now they're all saying she's a man. And that has changed because when I remember arguing, I remember bringing, like, not bringing her up as an example when she was in the news talking about it. And them all being like, of course, we would never call her a man. That's disgusting. You're, you're lying about us in order to make us look bad. And now they're all just straight out, like, Mayor Fort Estater and stuff, just saying, this is a man. And I mean, it's horrible to use one person as an example. Obviously, she's like an international celebrity, so everyone knows who she is. But they change their mind on this all the time. And like, we can yeah. bring up examples of, you know, there are generally intersex conditions are uh, categorized to male or female. But there are some that originally they categorized to one and then they changed over time based on the number of people who are transitioning. Uh, from this intersex in this intersex condition, where it's like more than two thirds of them were transitioning, so they decided to stop just calling it male, called it female, and said, "But you know, and all of this is based on the actual intersex people involved, because they're the only people that matter when it comes to categorizing this." But even you don't even need to bring that up because the actual gender criticals change their own mind on what these things are. It, it's just it's just garbage. It's such awful people. I'm being told um, but yes. I missed a super chat from Monkey at Typewriter. Aha. Oh, is there that? Go. Okay. This one. Um, Five dollars for Monkey at Typewriter. I appreciate one thing about Sunak. Uh, spelt wrong. He shows that brown people can also be bigoted tools. I work with GCs and it's just real hard not to throw hands. Uh, do not fight anyone. Uh, sorry you work with bigots. And, uh, yeah, people can be dickheads of any race or any gender or any eye colour. <laughs> yeah, I love when people come to us and they're like, oh, well, how do we deal with this trans person who did this bad thing? And it's like, tra trans people do bad things. A any person from any group can do bad things. Like, mm. minority groups. You can, you can hate Caitlyn Jenner without being transphobic about her. Just because minority groups are oppressed on like a statistical basis, like a statistical average doesn't necessarily mean they're like, you know, all on that. <clears throat> anyway, mm. 
I'm not articulating my point, so I'm just gonna move on to the next super chat. 9.99 from Eli. How do I counter, counter the nuh uh argument when I tell transphobes that every major medical organization in the world and multiple studies prove and acknowledge trans people? Toughest argument to crack. Well, that's the part where I, I think you don't. You've already won. Yeah, yeah. You, you've won You're the argument. With a child. The reason we continue to do that stuff on like air is because it convinces people watching to see that all they have is a nuh uh or a percentage of mucosal linings is like where their argument <laughs> falls back to, right? That's what's convincing to people is to see like, oh, this one side has this argument that's compelling and the other side, when pressed, it sounds compelling initially, but when pressed, it goes back to these sorts of things. Um, yeah. But yeah, I, I initially when I read this, I thought they were going to talk about how people will say that the statements of support of trans people by medical organizations is not necessarily a statement on the quality of the evidence, but that's just not true. These medical organizations are making these statements because... Based the, on it. Yeah, they're based on the available evidence. That's what's informing the position. But you're right. Is the, the actual best argument is just giving up on logic altogether and just being like, no, no, no. Like, that, you can't, that can't lose. Like, and that's why they do it. That's why three-year-olds do it, because they have no shame and they don't understand that you're cleverer than them and you've worked out they're wrong. But gender critical people do it because they also have no shame and no ability to rational. Like, <laughs> yeah, like it, it, the only point when you get someone into that position, if you can screenshot it or record it and show other people what they're like, then that might be good. Uh, For sure. If you're just talking to them in a one on one situation, they have just signaled to you that they are worthless. So go talk to someone else. Yeah, definitely. With that, though, that is the last yeah. super chat. So I want to do a huge thanks to our call screener, Jess. Thank you, Jess, for screening your call tonight. We had some good ones. I do want to talk to Lee again, even if we talked a little shit. Hopefully you don't take it personally if you're still watching and you call back in. Uh, happy to continue the conversation. Uh, also, thanks to all the mods in chat. I see Rochelle, Stephanie, Dylan, and Alyssa, among others. Thank you guys so much for helping keeping the chat respectful and focused and directing people here to call in when they have disagreements with us. I saw somebody bump in right as we were wrapping up calls to be like, there's only two genders. So I called him a coward in chat because I'm like, yeah, you wait till the end of the show to come in and say that in chat, huh? You don't have the, the guts to call in live. Like Katie said at the beginning, what an own it would be. What a victory for the anti-trans crowd to publicly decimate us with your arguments. But you can't. Uh, but uh, also, you can try next week if you want. There are only two genders. And what on, what is a woman is so like entry level, new, boring stuff. It's like the people who come in and be like, my granddaddy want a monkey. It's like, right. Dude, it's so stupid. Like, you know, it's just the kind of thing that I feel like, you know, the Simpsons parry did it in the 90s level stupid. Like, yeah. we've done that. Like, it's so... It, like, if you want to be transphobic, you come in and say, and there's only... Two, like, people write in my comments sometimes, like, there's only two genders. Like, are you trying to get a rise out of me? It's just kind of... It's a bit embarrassing that you think this is, like, a thing. Do, is, yeah. this, is this as far as you've got? Like, did you... Are you 16 and you only just got a Twitter account and you followed Matt Walsh yesterday and you suddenly... Oh, I gotta write up some trans people. It's like, hey, come on, please. Can you not just, like, do something like the advanced gender criticals do and, like, claim that object uh, definitions are prescriptive or write some deranged thing about mutilated genitals instead? Like, it's just... Come on. <laughs> yeah. I, I Entry-level say... noob. We started posting uh, shorts and TikToks recently, the line, and uh, it's boosted views a lot. The comment sections on the shorts are terrible. Not as bad as I would think. So in some like there there is a good balance, but a lot of there's a lot of shitty comments. But all of the shitty comments are that tier. The there's only two genders. There's nobody who's countering the things we're saying or like debunking anything or bringing good evidence. It's all like troons or there's only two gender like it's all the, the absolute worst tier commentary and i'm like tiktok is 13 and like it doesn't <laughs> hurt my feelings when you say those things it just makes you look bad but anyway let's wrap up this show thank you guys so much uh tune in next week for another episode with katie and i right here on transatlantic uh, if katie remembers we'll see uh it's been real let's talk about vaginal mucus <laughs>
vaginal mucus. We need a, that needs to be a merch line now. Yes. 66% vaginal mucus. <laughs> I'm a transmetaphilist for that. 65% not interested. <laughs> Bye, guys. <laughs>